<clears throat> How you been, Les? Good. It is uh it is snowing right now in Texas, in Austin, Texas. Really? No yes. way. That guys... darn low warming. As a friend of mine just <laughs> said, this supports her theory that we are in an alternate timeline where like Trump is president. Welcome to Unapologetic Geek Out, where you can geek out every week and never have to feel sorry about it. Why, it's who's geeking out with you and fucking up the intro. Why, it's me, Nick the Merc with the mic, and my fellow unapologists. I'm not fucking anything about I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. Who's, who's the one not fucking anything up? Me, Travis. And as well, we, uh, we have joined us in. Oh, sorry, I messed up too. So. Uh, he messed up. <laughs> Someone's gonna fuck it up. Uh, no. Yes, it's Justin Zarian here also. So, hey. <laughs> hey, guys. How is it going today? Pretty good. It's going. <laughs> Just going. It's it is indeed going. Life is continuing. We are decaying as we speak. Let's get going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <decaying>. No. <laughs> I uh, I had a very very busy week this last week. Uh, I think I might have mentioned it a little bit to Nick. Uh, might have. Uh, maybe not. But uh, I pretty much worked nonstop for an entire night uh, on Tuesday. So I mm-hmm. got half an hour of sleep that night. Fun. And yeah, it's. That was at the tip of the iceberg of finals week this week and everything else. So mm. no, you did message me at like 3 a.m. in the morning when I was at work and I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is he doing up? No, I, do- I didn't think you'd answer that until the morning. But then it's just like, oh, yeah, Nick doesn't sleep in the evening. So mm-hmm. <laughs> the whole third shift thing. Yeah. Us vampires, we got stuff to do. Uh, <laughs> including the stuff to do. Why today we're talking about the future. Uh, the future man, to be specific, we're bringing on Les Dude, Weiler. Dude, we're talking about the future man. Future man, man, it's <laughs> like, wild. The future's coming alive, man. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, hate... when did Mickey Mouse come in and talk about that? Ha ha, we're talking about the future man. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> man, don't you uh, misinterpret my Shaggy for for Mickey Mouse? <laughs> that was Shaggy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh man. See, it's actually like, hey, Scoob. <laughs> like, hey, man. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're talking about we're bringing on Les Weiler of the TV Dudes and the Good Die Young podcast to talk some Future Man with us. That'll be later in the show. But first, we got to get through the regular geeky news of the week, and we have uh, I thought one, but now we have two trailers to get through to today. Ooh, doubling so, up. So we'll see here. First off. Uh, let's get through the highlights of the news of the week with our man Justin. So it's time for this Justin with Justin. And back to me again. Okay, so Nick gave me a stern talking to about keeping this short because he don't want to stay up too late. But um, <laughs> I'm tired, Justin. Let me, let me get too. that beauty don't worry. So Let me um, work on my Shaggy impression that you are critiquing. <laughs> ha ha! We're gonna talk like Mickey Mouse to be Shaggy. <laughs> but, um, How dare uh, you, sir? He's coming for you, Nick. He's coming for you. Oh, I've been right in the jugular. Uh, one thing though that is interesting. This is kind of technically a trailer slash news story, but War Games is getting a reboot. You know that classic movie from the eighties, but yep. it's not a reboot like you think it is. Mm. Now it's hashtag War Games. Oh this no. Ga- <laughs> this ga- this one is an interactive online series that's being rebooted by the developers of the video game Her Story, if you're familiar with that one. I'm a mildly. <clears throat> okay, so it's a unique kind of gaming story where you're watching interview tapes of a crime that committed – I mean like someone interrogating a woman about a crime committed and you do these kind of weird like searches for key words to further investigate stories about what's going on. And it's one of those really cool like – narrative interactive storylines now they're going to do that uh in a similar way but more of a serialized tv format for war games so i thought that's pretty cool Hmm. but uh and it's definitely going to be a very modernized like you know hacker conspiracy stuff you have to investigate the mystery behind this new you know computer ai that's controlling these things it it feels like that game orwell if anyone's ever played that one as well on steam Mm, i have not nope Okay, I'm I'm feeling too geeky for you guys. But um, (laughs) uh, that's a great little kind of espionage game like that, too. Uh, Going from there, though, the really big story, the one that's shaking the airways, people don't know what to make of it. It sounds like a joke, but it's totally not a joke. Quentin Tarantino wants to do a Star Trek movie, and it's probably going to happen. I heard this. This this will be fun, I think. Uh, I... (laughs) 
Sounds like I, a train wreck, honestly. I'm, I'm, I'm very interested to see what type of dialogue happens with a bunch of locked, like, a bunch of people locked in, uh, uh like a hateful eight situation, but with phasers <laughs> instead of fucking <laughs> old West guns. <laughs> Very kind profanity going on here. But, uh, they did say it is, it would be an R-rated Star Trek movie. So that's a huge change, first of all. Yeah. Uh, second of all, it is actually something they're meeting with J.J. Abrams and a writing staff to kind of think tank this idea. Like, okay, Tarantino pitched his premise. Now let's see if we can actually make a story out of it. Uh, and of all people, just out of the blue, um, freaking Patrick Stewart's message is like, oh yeah, if you're going to do it, I will reprise my role as Jean-Luc Picard for your movie. <laughs> It sure, sounds insane, but th- this is actually a thing that's moving forward. So, wow. <laughs> See, I'm sorry, did you say what? What in a planet I ever heard of? They speak Klingon and what? <laughs> Klingon, mother effer, do you do speak you speak it? it? <laughs> I, say yeah, Worf you know, again. Say Worf one more goddamn time. One more goddamn time. <laughs> uh, I think this could uh, open up some interesting possibilities. I... I'm not as queenie about the Star Trek thing. I don't think, no. uh, I think some changes could, could help keep the franchise fresh. I was never a huge fan until they made it more like Star Wars yeah. with the J.J. Abram movies. <laughs> so, uh, it's not like I, I don't, I'm not as, uh, uh, I'm not sure how the Trekker community is, uh, is treating this, uh, you know, without, I, I without they, don't, they don't know how to make this. Like, they, they don't know what to think about this story. It's just mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. crazy. You know, it's, it's a bit out there. Well, uh, even for, you know, <laughs> a, a show about talking aliens. Indeed. <laughs> but, uh, going from there then, uh, so we talked about it a little bit, uh, last week that Daisy Ridley's saying like, well, I may not come back for Star Trek, but I think she had a stern talk. You mean to- Star Wars? Star, Star Wars, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, I show never her come back colors. to Star Trek. <laughs> you weren't even in that one. Whatever one I'm in, I'm not coming back for it. <laughs> Who cares? They're the same thing nowadays. No. Uh, <laughs> um, there was some rumors saying that she might be leaving at the Star Trek, but she clarified her comments now saying, it's not so much that I am leaving Star, uh, Star Wars. Sorry. <laughs> doing it again. Oh, it's again. I, I say it like- <laughs> I'm tired too. <laughs> but she says that she's just not sure what the future holds, but she would still do more Star Wars movies. If now they that's Star ask Trek. Her. Yeah. Though I would see Stacey really in Star Trek too. That'd be yeah. really fine. Um, Ryan Johnson confirms that the new Star Wars trilogy that he's heading up will not feature Old Republic in any capacity. So, boo. Uh, oh. And it will also not be connected to the original current trilogies. Uh, it's going to be set in its own corner of the universe, uh, separate from the Jedi, from Skywalkers, from anything else in between. So hmm. well, that could be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I really just want them to do something Old Republic at some point. Like that is way too good an entry in the extended universe canon for them to throw away. You know? Yeah. Well, could we get could we get a movie, or could they remake the first fucking Knights of the Old Republic game? Probably. Like. Because that's a good well, fucking it, story that I don't think people are playing enough of because that game's kind of broken. <laughs> like, Well, actually, they, um, they, they just released a new update on Xbox One where if you have the old Xbox game, you can play it with updated graphics uh, oh, on really? the Xbox One. Yeah, which I – when I went home, I picked up my old Xbox copy and uh, downloaded it. And sure enough, it does look not significantly better, but it looks touched up. And they did a few other little uh, upgrades on it. So hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and, but yeah, I mean, Knights of the Republic is one of the single greatest Star Wars games ever made, so they ought to c- include it somewhere. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, just going through the stuff. Hey, you know that Fox and uh, Disney deal? It's yeah. happening. They are oh closing boy. in a deal. We're gonna, it's imminent. Day like within days, we're going to hear about the details of what happened in that deal. So doom, <laughs> doom happened. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm, ass- I'm assuming Fox wants to focus on their news and sports. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what they said. So. Hey, it looks like I'm pretty sure Marvel's going to acquire a lot of their old properties back uh, from this deal. So and at this point, they're just going to be able to kill Sony. <laughs> like, and, oh, and, sorry, Sony, we're taking it now. <laughs> oh yeah, and then maybe um, who knows? We'll get those theatrical cuts of Star Wars. He was hoping, and then we'll maybe get that dream project I said of having Simpsons and Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't. Okay, I wouldn't bitch, but. I, I do like uh, Ryan Reynolds did like a tweet or something like we are ready we are ready to come home sort of thing with with <laughs> Deadpool or um well and since we brought up Ryan Reynolds I just got to bring up this story yes <sighs> Ryan Reynolds is gonna play Detective Pikachu yep <laughs> yep <laughs> that's amazing wow okay I mean uh, Danny DeVito would have been my choice too like everyone else on the internet but mm-hmm. sure why not Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> 
I don't know. I think Marky Mark might have been a fun choice too. <laughs> yeah, when he was getting his name was getting kicked around, but I'm looking for a Bulbasaur, just a little Bulbasaur. Say, how do your mother for me? Like what? <laughs> what do you want me to get inside this Pokeball and then get in, uh, be accepted as a slave? No, I'm not going to do that. I mean, I'm going to thunder shock mysteries. you if you force me to do that. And force my hand. I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, Alice Eve is joining Iron Fist season two. Sure, she was in Star Trek. She was. Very unbeloved on that movie, but maybe she'll do some good in Iron Fist. But um, Doubt it. who was she? Uh, she was the girl who got like half naked on uh, Into Darkness. Oh, I'd surprise people even remember her. <laughs> exactly. I mean, she's still around. She pops up in movies now and then. And she's not terrible. She's just that was not a good way to expose her to the public. I mean, okay, exposing. Uh-huh, public, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm doing a lot of that lately. These accidental puns. It's just becoming part of my regular conversation. <laughs> Double entendres, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but also something interesting. So now that we've had the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we're going to watch a Marvel podcast universe. Uh, really? Marvel's investing a lot into podcast, um, storytelling, including this new series called Wolverine the Long Night, which yes, is going to be led by, yeah, it's going to be led by Richard Armitage, who was the head dwarf in the Hobbit movies to play Wolverine. Very cool. Yeah, no, I think that's really cool. They're expanding into different mediums. Uh, they're really trying to capitalize all corners of the market in this case. Hey, maybe we'll get bought up by Disney. Well, I think <laughs> that, like, you remember, uh, it's like an audiobook, but, like, uh, do you remember what DC made one of those times uh, with the, the 52 audiobook? Uh, it, no, I don't think I heard about that. It's a great little audiobook of what, uh, of their special event, what happened in between, like, uh, 52 weeks, uh, when Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman took a hiatus, and the story follows Batwoman, <laughs> the the question, remain, R- Renee Montoya, and uh, Booster Gold, and a couple other people that don't normally get focus. Hmm. All the tiniest, tiniest heroes. <laughs> and it all it all had a Foley sound design, a whole like stage thing going on. It was like this. It was like a, a, a old radio play with a bunch of sound effects and all this other s- stuff. It was super fucking cool. Yeah, uh, no, who would have thought that radio dramas would be the thing that would be revived lately? Like th- everything old is new again. It's just, I, just crazy. I, I and I would I would love to see Marvel do something similar with some of its properties. So yeah. that that does excite me quite a bit. Yeah, so I don't know when that's exactly coming out, but look forward to it soon. Uh, also, uh, do, 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 lots of Justice League stuff that no one cares about, uh, except that. Joss Whedon may be getting an extended director's cut on the Blu-ray release. It's still up to for debate, but it seems like a a bit of a vindictive move against the fans. I'm like, well, what about the Zack Snyder cut? It's like, we don't have Zack Snyder stuff. We have more Joss Whedon for you. <laughs> so fuck y'all. <laughs> um, and then Zack Snyder is still producing Aquaman and Wonder Woman 2. But again, when you say producing, that just means he's funded some of the money. He'll often – he might say one creative decision, but those are very much in the hands of James Wan and um, uh, Patty Jenkins uh, for mm-hmm. those movies. So just so you know, don't freak out if you see his name in those movies. <laughs> um also casting on Shazam they're casting the Jack Dylan Grazer from It who played that hypochondriac character Eddie in that movie. Okay. Yeah. Uh he's joining in as Billy Batson's uh best friend Freddie Freeman who oh, okay. I believe in the comic um Harrison said of the Breakfast Pub that he's uh Shazam Jr or Captain Marvel Jr in the comic continuity. Oh cool. <clears throat> yeah. Um they're passing around new photos of um Burton Thwaites is Robin in, t- in the Titans TV show, and he looks like Robin. So there you go. They're going for a very strictly old school Robin look uh, in this case. Yeah, it was interesting that uh, <clears throat> they. I was. I, I thought that for sure they'd go with the Nightwing look, but the this Robin looks pretty neat too. Yeah, I, I have a feeling they're probably going to make Nightwing become a thing later in the show. Like if they make it past season one to season two, he'll become Nightwing. Oh sure. Because Damien's really the current Robin that people are, at least younger audiences are familiar with now. Uh, for better or for worse, in my opinion. But, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> don't ask Nick his opinion on that one. Yeah, fuck yeah, Damien. That, yeah, that little turd fuck Damien. Fuck Damien and his little fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Now I say he gave us his opinion anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm on the fence about Damien. Yes, just a bit. Uh, you remember that uh, Frozen short that they were showing in front of Coco that everyone Boy, really hated? Boy, do we. Yeah, it was well, don't worry, they're taking it off of that now. So you will not see that Frozen <laughs> short in front of any other screenings of Coco up this point. Well, you know, it wasn't the fact that it was actually that terrible. I should think it's the fact that it was it's so fucking long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, no, it's hey, much here's the Frozen TV. short. 
Maybe yeah, Coco it's a TV later. episode in front of Coco, pretty much. 20 goddamn minutes <laughs> on top of the 18 minutes we already watched the trailers. You know, yeah. show up like 45 minutes late to the fucking movie and we, you didn't miss anything. We, we were late and we were like, damn it, we're not late enough. We're not, we weren't late enough to miss the fucking uh, <laughs> uh, short. Yeah, so that was a thing. Um, but I, I guess it's a good move. It shows Disney response to the fan feedback. Oh, uh, also, James Coco Frank, was awesome. Go take, go check it out if you have it the chance, guys. Yeah, yeah I can't wait. Now, now that I'm done with school stuff, I can't wait to just catch up on all these movies. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. James Franco writing high off of the success of The Disaster Artist, where, believe it or not, he's probably going to get a Best Actor Oscar nomination for playing that. Uh, weird. That's really, yeah, weird. A guy playing one of the worst actors ever is going to get an Oscar nomination for that role. Yeah. But he's going to now direct a biopic that he's also starring in on Shel Silverstein called A Boy Named Shell. Uh, <laughs> If you're not familiar, Shel Silverstein's a very famous, you know, poet, kids uh, book writer, uh, and he also wrote lots and lots of song lyrics for people, including Johnny Cash with his most famous one of his most famous songs, "A Boy Named Sue." Mm-hmm. Huh. So that's cool. I, I grew up reading Shel Silverstein books, and they were very, very charming back in the day. Find so, that son of a bitch that named me Shel. Named Sue. That's one of my favorite Johnny Cash songs ever. So. <laughs> um, Going from there, the Annie Awards, speaking of animated films, Coco, of course, is one of the big front runners for the Annie Awards. It's a big animation dedicated uh, voting committee. Uh, and also the Breadwinner, which is one of the biggest um, international big contenders this year. Uh, mm-hmm. But it, it was just something uh, – this is just going to be a plug too. Hey, check out my podcast on oneofus.net, uh, which is called Eye on the Prize, where we talk a lot more about these award shows. So I don't have to bore Nick and Travis with this stuff. But <laughs> well, I'm I'm pretty sure Coco has got it all up in the bag as far as animation awards this year. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. there's uh, it's just a big thing that animated movies this year kind of sucked. Like, it, and not even all terrible, but it's just such a weak year for American made films. And it's just, I mean, what Boss Baby, Captain Underpants, yeah. Despicable Me Three. Like, do we really think these are the ones that we say, oh, these are the best animated features we saw this year? No, not really. So Coco so. is it by default, basically. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, uh, and then a few other award things were there. Uh, Shape of Water is dominating a lot. Guillermo del Toro's new movie, mm-hmm. which I hear is amazing. I cannot wait to see that. It's going to be uh, really, really cool. Yeah, I'm down for some fish fucking. Yeah, she's going to fuck that fish good. She fucking that fish. Ah, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the story's uh, about, Justin. I'm not sure what I, you're excited about if you're not down for fish fucking. Yeah, but I also hear that we get to see other people have sex in this movie, and the people that we didn't want to see do that. But... Aww. <laughs> there's, there's regular fucking god. Yeah. I, I want to say All his name rhymes. Force heteronormative <laughs> relationships. I don't like it. Indeed, and his name is Heiko Shannon. It rhymes with that. So, oh, yeah. oh no, oh. another monster, <laughs> another creature having sex. <laughs> um, Edgar Wright says he's going to write a sequel to Baby Driver, and that's all we know about that so far. But uh, we'll see what's going on. Uh, Kevin yeah. Spacer. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's dead in it. <laughs> Yeah, no, they, so. it's definitive that he's not coming back if they make a sequel. So, um, they're also doing more, well, Ridley Scott claims he can do another alien movie, except it'll focus even less on the alien this time. So, why bother? Seriously. Ridley, Jesus, let it go. Do something else. <laughs> like, yeah. You're, you're making mean, me not like any of the alien movies anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's a really unfortunate thing. Um, we're getting that, uh, movie adaptation of Are You Afraid of the Dark that's now set for 2019. You remember that TV show back at Nickelodeon? Yeah. Fuck yeah, I do. Yeah. Love so, it. uh, Are you afraid of not the a dark? whole lot of note about it, but yeah, it's, it's set for 2019 release date. So, that's pretty cool. Hmm. Um, I don't know how good the movie will be, but that's interesting at least. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of drama happened on the set of Bohemian Rhapsody this week as Brian Singer's been fired off the set. Uh, that's the adaptation of the Queen biopic, uh, that they're making. And shortly after that, then he got another lawsuit alleging him of molesting another minor. So yeah, so uh, I remember last week I fucked up when I meant I meant to say Brett Ratner. I said Brian Singer instead. I guess I just uh, didn't have to correct myself. No, you really shouldn't. I think you actually <laughs> made that happen, Nick. I might have fucked yeah. that up. I, <laughs> I know, and apparently it wasn't just that. I mean, apparently he was just very unprofessional on set. He wasn't showing up for work. He got. They say there was a lot of conflict between him and Rami Malek, who's playing Freddie Mercury. But they quickly replaced him with a guy, Dexter Fletcher, who directed that movie Eddie the Eagle, if you remember that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I kind of remember. I don't think I actually ever ended up seeing it. Yeah, so he's pretty much just a guy for hire. They're just like, hey, he directed a movie. People seem to like it. Come on in here. So mm-hmm. he's going to finish principal photography and get ready for 
the movie to release next year. So, okay, that's cool. Netflix is moving forward with more adult aim choose your own adventure stories. Uh, they've been doing that more for the, on the kids channel and apparently it's been, uh, fairly successful for them. So we're going to start seeing a lot more interactive online series coming out from Netflix. Hmm. That, that's kind of cool actually. Which uh, sexual also- soldier do you want to get kicked off the show? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us uh, kids. All the above. <laughs> but, um, last story, just very quickly. Kurt Russell's going to play Santa Claus in a Netflix original movie. Nice. <laughs> just, I just thought it was funny. Just like, hey, okay, uh, never thought I would see that, but sure. I mean, Kurt Russell's, Kurt, he's that age. He's probably got some grandkids to please. So <laughs> now I'm just imagining him in his role from like Tombstone with like the fucking white <laughs> uh, facial hair. Like, well, all I right, got there, all these little whippersnappers. You want a Merry Christmas? <laughs> I got all, I uh, got all these elves here making me some. <laughs> You know what? Now I understand. Like trying to do uh, Kurt Russell from Tombstone, I realize he's doing a just doing a John Wayne impression the whole fucking That's time. That's what he's always done. Yeah, just, it, just Kurt Russell is just John Wayne again. Like I'm like I can't do a Kurt Russell impression. No, wait, I can do John Wayne. Aha, gotcha. Like, <laughs> I I just want to see him keep that giant mustache from the Hateful Eight. You know, he just he needs to keep that around all the time. <laughs> yeah, but hopefully not the the uh, the abuse to- towards women that was present in that movie either. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I suppose, <laughs> I suppose. I mean, to be fair, if that woman had it coming, she was not. Oh, don't get me nice wrong. Person. I would have punched the shit out of her too. Five, <laughs> I still want to see Santa doing it. <laughs> I have no context for this as I've not seen this movie, but sure, guys, I'm just gonna go with that punching women. Uh huh, dude. Hmm. That woman okay, was yeah, a that, bitch. That, you, you made the pitch now. That's Kurt Russell and Bad Santa three. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, that's all the new stories I got. So, moving on, please. All right, so we're going to take a small musical break then. Thank you, Justin. Uh, we're going to take a small musical break, and we'll be back with the trailer talk right after this. Yo, Tom from Toonami here. You're listening to the UGO Podcast. And I hope you all are ready, because trailer talk starts now. And welcome to trailer talk, guys. Uh, I am super excited for today. Uh, I know we got a, a a Jurassic trailer, that's for sure. Uh, I, uh, I don't was know. That really, that was, was that your pun? That was, that yeah, was basically well, it. You could go dino sized or something. Uh, you know what? Let me, let's rewatch. Let's go back to the Jurassic period. Let me try again. Uh, we have, uh, 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 you see guys, uh, what we have, uh, is the uh, trailer, uh, uh, we'll, uh, find a way. Uh, <laughs> it's a mammoth sized trailer, if you will. Can can everyone see my eye roll from here? I feel like they should be able to. I can't, but okay, I'll take your word for it. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, we uh, are going to watch the trailer for uh, Jurassic World. What's it? Fallen Kingdom? Fallen Kingdom. Falling Down. I don't know. Fallen Kingdom. Okay. (laughs) Fall Out Boy. Right. So Jurassic (laughs) World and Falling Down crossed over. That would be the weirdest movie ever. Just thinking about that. I, a guy goes postal and kills a bunch of dinosaurs. <laughs> it's probably a good idea. So, I'm not going to lie, Jurassic World's a pretty cheesy B-movie that I like probably more than anyone else does. <laughs> like, I think the same thing. I'm like, it's it's not a great movie, but everyone's so vitriolic and hate with them. Like, it's just what it is. It's a B-movie, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, it's... I, if it would have come out in the 50s or whatever, the, like it would it would not feel out of place in, like, that 50s sci-fi sort of thing. Yeah, especially with all the regressive sexism in it, too. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Chris Pratt <laughs> is basically playing Mr. Uh, sexual Harassment yeah. at work. You want to visit my bungalow? He's that girl to becoming his girlfriend, too. I uh, want to visit my bungalow? I am your fucking boss, so... <laughs> Uh, hopefully that'll, uh, get resolved here. Maybe we'll, uh, see a little more of a woke version um, of Jurassic Park. <laughs> no. Wait, wait until you see this trailer. <laughs> uh, I have not seen it yet, so I, I will wait to, wait to judge here. Uh. Pretty judging right now. Yeah, but with that, with that being said, let's get the judging on, shall we? Uh, so three, two, one, let's give that one a watch. Records. So, uh. I thought it was going to be Kong Skull Island for a minute. Ellen. Ventriloquist? Stop it. You love a dummy. This is not why we're here. You love a dummy. You can blame me. Try this is a song choice. It is kind of odd. I, yeah, I kind of like it. You know, same congruous. You up. Save the dinosaurs from an island that's about to explode. <laughs> 
What could go wrong? I feel like we should just leave the dinosaurs there, actually. Also, why would you be able to mute a park on an active volcano? Hmm. <laughs> is that the fucking storyline of this? Same protection yes. Given to other species? That was kind of neat. I kind of like that. Yeah. To die. Mommy, I want that toy. Oh, look. Callback shots. These creatures were Oh, look. Callback hey! actor. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Everything called back. And if we're not careful, they're going to be here after. You know me. You don't know me. Buy a standoff. <laughs> no. Yes. Run, everybody, we ran out of ideas, so we're just doing a volcano sequel. <laughs> Ooh, Carnotaurs. <laughs> oh, look, it's that shot from Jurassic Park. Yep. Life cannot be contained. <laughs> Life breaks free. Life. Sad. That finds a way. There, there he is. is. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> fucking nerds. Like Mission Impossible 4. <laughs> Poor Angelosaur. <laughs> um. Okay. So that was the trailer for uh, Lost. Oh look, <laughs> the guy's writing it. The guys who wrote and directed the last movie. So there you go. Yeah, that's not surprising. I, you know what? <laughs> I'm really excited that Jeff Goldblum is back. Uh, I hope it's just a cameo. Like I, I don't want to see him do anything more than just you know show up for where he needs to be. Really, I think that would actually make this movie watchable. Just like, oh, let's just watch Jeff Goldblum chew scenery for like half an hour. Yeah, well, I don't, I, I mean, I don't know where, like, uh, <laughs> I don't know where he fits into the story or if he's going to be on the island at all. Um, well, because um, from what it sounds like, since they erased Lost World, even though it looks like they're kind of remaking it for this movie, but uh -huh. only events of the first movie happen, so I guess he's just kind of become his own, you know, become his professor like he usually is. He wrote a book, and then he's just, I guess he's, I don't know why, I don't know why he's in this story here, it's just... Why not? So I'm, I'm trying to look through back to this trailer. Are there any kids in the in the park still? Oh yeah, no. They're, 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 okay, so Chris had a big, you know, he had a tirade on Facebook and then on Breakfast Pub about this. The fact that there are two kids who show up in this movie. Uh, Chris Cox of either, One of Us by the way. Sorry, yeah, I need to clarify. But just the idea that, like, okay, why do we? I mean, I know why we keep bringing back kids because that's the only way you can get other people than adults to watch this movie. Mm -hmm. But. What's the logic of having kids on a dangerous mission where you bring them to get dinosaurs off of an uh, island that's going to explode with a volcano? Yeah, that, that seems, seems really irresponsible. See, I don't even think that ki having kids in the story is necessary because if you it's want not. kids, if you have, if you want kids to watch the movie, there's fucking dinosaurs in it. That's yeah, but that's it is a scary. selling point. It's violent, so yeah, that's a selling point for a lot of kids. A lot of kids want to go watch dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think it'd be more of a trick for parents. Like, look, there's children in here, so your kids should be able to watch it. Look, so my inner three-year-old is excited about a bunch of fucking dinosaurs stampeding. That's, that's fucking rad. Well, and then uh, uh, one of the kids, I believe, or at least um, that younger black kid who was next to Bryce Dallas Howard, that's uh, Justice Smith from The Get Down, if I remember correctly. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, he's I a good mean, actor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, I am probably going to watch this movie. I... I have my I have soft spot for creature features. I like dinosaurs. Uh, they're the only movies that seem to be wanting to make dinosaur movies nowadays. Uh, I understand why there's only one. We only do things in like one set. Like this, this one studio does the dinosaur movies. That's it. And then this other studio does the pirates movies. That's it. Like, can we get? Well, maybe it's kind of hard when they've capitalized that franchise so hardcore. It's like, yeah, they do the one pirate movie. But it's the people who did the best pirate movies, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, but then they did a lot more after that. <laughs> and it's, oh, not like yes. these are th it's not like these are the best dinosaur movies. <laughs> like, there's some, well, it's open Jurassic for Park some competition. One. Jurassic Park 1, at least, so. 
Sure. <laughs> uh, three is watchable. No, yeah, I, it's not. I, I, I like the dinosaur fight in that one. <laughs> the, That's the stupidest part. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm very uh, into seeing characters return. I want to see BD Wong be the guy that actually set off the volcano. I want him to go su- full super villain in it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Why not? It's about as subtle as anything else in this trailer. It's true. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> uh, I'm excited seeing Chris Pratt back. Uh, I don't know what his role is as dinosaur wrangler anymore if like all the dinosaurs are just running around like well, what are they trying to because he has he has a deep connection with blue that's why he wants to go back to save all the dinosaurs from the island because he raised one of them but sure uh, okay. go get a puppy that's ridiculous <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously <laughs> uh i don't know travis what are you feeling on it it seems really dumb. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I try to look the bright side here, but like, hey, there's a bunch of dinosaurs on a volcanic island. Yeah, what's what's your point? No, that's well, we got to go save them. Why? No, Why? no, no, no. no. Well, that's also, the last thing. Also, they have all the genetic do. material. Can't they just reclone the dinosaurs that they died? Sure. Why not? I mean, I'm sure it's expensive, but but you still. can't get blue back, Justin. Blue is irreplaceable. <laughs> <sighs> It won't. It won't be the same beautiful creature as before. Except that it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be a clone. So we, we do remember we, that Blue murdered a lot of dudes, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. The instant that it met up with that giant uh, super Saurus Rex, whatever that thing was in the last movie, it's like, Not like it was oh, the yeah, most super loyal I'm a dinosaur. Creature. Yeah, I should go kill everybody. Seriously, it's just. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll we'll give that one a tentative. Um, we'll see. I think. Well, you that, know, the that's... one thing I like about this, I mean, like. The director is Juan Antonio Bayona, and he's done a lot of really good movies on the whole. Um, he did uh, The Impossible, that tsunami movie with Naomi Watts. Uh, oh, very and he awesome. also, Didn't he do A Monster Calls as well? Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah so he's done good movies. It's a very good movie, actually. This one doesn't seem like it was personal for him. Like It seems like a studio job more than anything. But maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. Yeah, I, I don't think this is going to be the same. Like it, I think this one's a, just a paid job for him he's just got in for the paycheck just to make a creature feature um, i'm sure it's one of those like you do this for us then you can do whatever movie you want next mm, so yeah like a, you know it's a check for like hey i want to do this movie like okay but you got to direct a bigger franchise for us sort of thing <laughs> sure uh, why not and hopefully that movie will it funds will uh, fund uh you know a pretty good movie too but uh with that we'll leave that one to to rest before we revive it with fucking amphibian frog dna or whatever the fuck excuse <laughs> they, they have come up with um let's move on to our next one we're gonna bring up uh oh yes we have the james cameron i can't believe it's actually happening uh alita battle angel no so, james cameron produced robert rodriguez directed okay okay um yeah, so <laughs> okay, just seeing the first like scene, I'm terrified. I'm I'm very interested in this because uh, this movie has been hap- has been you know been rumored to be happening for what the better part of ten years now. <laughs> I'm just like, hey, uh, James Cameron's gonna be gonna be doing it, uh, and uh, was, I think there was other directors attached at certain points. Everyone was all about like this this movie, man. It's gonna it's gonna get people really into anime, and I'm like. Uh, it, people are already into anime, guys. We missed the boat. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> but, uh, hope, hopefully it'll, it'll turn out a good movie. Anyone else, uh, watch or, or read the original, uh, manga? I think it's, uh, it's based off of, uh, uh, uh Alita Battle Angel. No. How well, about you, it's Justin? it's called Battle, Battle Angel Alita yeah. originally, but Battle. no, I've never seen it, so. Okay. Uh, I am not either, so I guess we are all very ignorant at this point. <laughs> Uh, I mean, from what I hear, I think this, you know, very much like Ghost in the Shell, this movie is kind of a mashup of the first three volumes. So, I mean, that could be really good or really bad, depending on who you who you talk to. Sure, sure, sure. Um, yeah. So, without any further ado, let's give this one a watch. God, those oh, eyes. scary eyes! <laughs> Terrifying, actually. <laughs> well, I can see my soul in them. She's one of those paintings from Big Eyes. Like, she probably actually has to, like, take brain functions away to fit those eyeballs in there. <laughs> this is just a body. It's not a shell, if you will, that we put uh, your ghost in. No, wait, no, no. 
might be even harder for them to crowbar what Battle Angel weird. means. I'm I supposed to know you? <laughs> Actually, her face is really gaunt too. We just met. All right, Christoph Waltz. That's a point in the movie's favor, but. Hello, I am the Jew robot hunter. <laughs> he is a robot hunter to some degree. <laughs> in this it's a harsh world. The strong prey on the weak down here. Not the best actor. <laughs> Ooh. Cotton mouth. Hmm. Does it bother you that I'm not completely human? No, it bothers me that your eyes are the size of fucking dinner plates. I give you whatever I have. I give you my heart. Uh, I don't want it. Will come for you. That's gross. Oh my. I think you were someone. That's some uh, Zack Snyder fast mo there. <laughs> May you stay in the arms of the angels. Hmm. And now we understand the song choice. <laughs> long haul. Oh, there, do you guys. not get long it haul. from the very first note? <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I didn't recognize the song until the very end. Uh, so yeah, that was the trailer for Battle Eagle, or not Alita Battle Angel. Now I'm uh, <laughs> fucked up on how to actually, which order it's in. Battle Alita um, Angel, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> how, how are we feeling about this one, guys? She's terrifying looking. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, no, that's the so, only <laughs> thing people can talk about on the internet lately. It's just, dang, those eyes are freaky. That's Let's like talk the about one. the, uh, elephant eyes in the room. Well, it's not even just the <laughs> elephant eyes. It's the fact that her face is tiny and gaunt, and then her eyes take up, like, 30% of her face. It's, yeah. It's, and then it, I think it's, her other parts of her body are CG, too, like her, her shirt, and, you know, then there's those robot arms she has, too. It's just, it's a weird creation, you know, just, you know, CG-wise. Monstrosity, I think, is the word you're looking for. I'm trying to be polite here. Come on. Why? <laughs> yeah, so, um, I think the, the... Uh, again, I am not familiar with the source material, so all I'm going off is the IMDb description here. The story of a young woman's journey to discover the truth of who she is and her fight to change the world. Uh, I'm assuming it looks kind of like a Pinocchio type thing of like, yeah, so discovering, basically, you know. from what I heard is that, uh, Christoph Waltz finds her in that junkyard pile. Uh, you know, she's still, she's a discarded robot, but she still has her higher brain functions, and so he rebuilds her as Alita. Uh, but then she finds out, you know, one, she's anesiatic, because Every character in that period is like, oh, I have amnesia. I have a mysterious past. <laughs> and then she also got like these insane, you know, superhuman level combat skills that she doesn't know where they come from. But there's someone who's murdering androids and other robots out there. Uh, and it's part of that whole conspiracy to figure out her past connected to these killings. Uh, among which Mahershala Ali is one of the other antagonists who's involved in that conflict too. So. So yeah, the, the story is good. I see a lot of good actors in here. Um, the CGI, the eyes without, uh, notwithstanding is actually very good. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mostly. I actually like that I scene mean, where she choke slams that motherfucker into yeah. the table. That was actually awesome. That guy um, still looks a little rubbery, but I mean, maybe, I mean, I keep saying that maybe they'll look better in the final movie, but they usually don't. But mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, well, the Marvel movies do. Like, Marvel movies always have a little bit of a weird sheen on them at the sure. trailer. trailers. Like, Hulk Hulk never looks as good as he does in the movie, uh, in the trailers, you know. <laughs> um, but I don't know what pro company is producing this, though, or how far in production it is in. Well, this um, is um, Robert Rodriguez's company mixed with James Cameron's company. So okay. there's a lot of hands in this movie. <laughs> so Robert Rodriguez is a guy that I respect greatly. Uh, I think he can, Why? <laughs> uh, because he can do a lot with a little, uh, he is very into the creative process. Uh, and I like that he, uh, goes to younger creators and gives them shots and stuff. Well, yeah, um, like that... his, uh, new TV show that he started up, uh, Rebel Without a Crew, where that's exactly what he does, where he gives him $7,000 and says, Hey, make a movie. And, yeah, and it, even he did it himself, where he made a movie for seven thousand dollars on that show. Yeah, so. so he kind of puts his money where his where his mouth is. So th that's where the respect kind of comes from. Now, after that, he's not made a movie that I have liked in quite some time. Yeah, <laughs> so, I think the last movie I liked of his was the first Sin City. I I think. Yeah, I I didn't mind Predators, the Predators movie he made. Uh, did, no, he didn't direct that though. He didn't direct did he? it. 
No, I, I think he directed else's. it. Mm. No, he was involved in the production. Uh, I'm pretty sure he did not direct that though. Oh, I'm. You know what? I'm. I'm fucked up on it. Then, then probably the first Sin City. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, Long time. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, that was um, Nimrod Antal who directed that one. So. Oh. Okay. So uh, yeah, I fucked up. Sorry. So uh, literally, a Nimrod directed that movie. So. <laughs> <Fucking> Nimrod. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah. Uh, so I'm. I'm. I'm a little concerned because he he has the tendency to forego natural storytelling and what works with the narrative to what looks cool yeah um and it's a thing he's never grown out of it was neat when we watched it in uh el mariachi or uh, or desperado or or whatnot but mm-hmm. he's never really grown out of that phase of like Hey, that's cute and everything, but why don't you grow up and actually make a real movie? <laughs> uh, well, and I don't know if giving him a budget helps because now you're just saying, "Hey, you get even more money to make more stylish mm-hmm. imagery that probably won't mean anything." So he's never, yeah, he's never been responsible with the budgets he's been given, and no. I, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know this this one. It doesn't. To be fair, if I had not known he dire- he directed it, it doesn't really look like one of his films. It, no, it doesn't look or feel like it. There's none none of his trappings or stylings, other than there's Latinos in the cast. Really, yeah. <laughs> um, it, to be honest, it it does remind me. I do. See, I feel J- James Cameron's touch upon this a little bit. Uh, with some, uh, of the, including the ham fisted dialogue in some cases. Uh, the dialogue is like. Yeah. Uh, like it, yeah. it's pretty standard robot. I am an AI trying to figure out who I am. Type dialogue. I'll like, give you my heart. <laughs> that's a little on the nose. Like that, that's not a little on the nose. That's the I nose. Mean, I mean, <laughs> I, for me, that one kind of works because it's so like, oh, here it actually is. Like it's kind of actually funny. Like it's so obvious. Not really a metaphor anymore. Yeah. No. Um. The, the, it's just but, those two lead actors who scare me a little bit because I'm like. Okay, other than the girl's freaky face and the CG eyes and that such, she, her line delivery and that other, uh, you know, the other main kid's line delivery, they're kind of a little stiff. I'm but I mean, they're up, surrounded by Oscar caliber actors all around them. So I'm trying to look up the actress right now, Rosa Salazar. Yeah, yeah, I think she. Uh, uh, she's still a relative newcomer, I think. So yeah, she played Copperhead in the Batman Arkham Arkham City game. <laughs> oh, okay, she's not bad in that one. So. Uh, oh, yes. she's in a uh, Maze Runner. Also, she's one of mm-hmm. the big characters in that one. Mm-hmm. So, okay, she she's still fairly new to the game. Mm-hmm. Oh, Michelle Rodriguez is in the, in this one, credited as a shock <laughs> as woman who dies. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. That sounds is, all is right. That actually, your credit? No, it's something. Uh, someone okay, named uh, Gelda, or yeah, a uh, woman who dies. Uh, I yeah. do like Christoph Waltz. I see him. I can't. I every time he's still got that thing of where I can't see. I'm like, oh, is he a bad guy in this? I can't shake his. Is he a bad guy? Hmm. Type yeah, paranoia. No, I, I, I think based on what I know about the character, there's a suspicion he's the bad guy, but it turns out he's not the bad guy in that case. And I'm sure. I think Christoph Waltz appreciates that because he gets so many villain roles, and he's. I'm pretty sure he's tired of it. Really, a little bit of typecasting. Yeah, I'm not sure where what Jackie Earl Haley is in this movie, but I like him a lot. Uh, oh, I love Jackie Earl Haley. Oh, uh, uh, Jeff Fahey's in this from Lost. Uh, Ed Scrine from Deadpool. Uh, oh, oh gosh, Casper Van Dien. <laughs> He's oh in this my movie. goodness! <laughs> Starship Troopers, buddy, where you been? <laughs> uh, 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 Jennifer Connelly also. What she seems like she's playing a robot with that vacant stare she's giving. Yeah, uh, well, I mean that is Jennifer Connelly's natural look, but <laughs> I know and I, I make fun of her. She's been good in other stuff too. Don't get me wrong, but her oh, no, natural she's a great actress. But... Yeah, she's very good, but her natural state, like, uh, you remember that uh, that first Hulk movie where she yeah. like her and the rest of the cast are giving nothing, and almost everyone but Sam Elliott feels like a robot. Mm. <laughs> so maybe that was just practice role for this. Well, also funny though too, um, Jennifer Connelly, this isn't her first foray into like big comic or graphic novel adaptations because she was the voice of the robot, um, I mean, of the suit in Spider Man. So. Yes, yeah. So, um. So hey, and she's married to Paul Bettany, so she's got robots all around her anyways, but. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, robots all around, just fucking robots all the time. Uh, I. <laughs> Uh, I'm, you know what, this, the cast list is very impressive to me. I really like a lot of these actors. The story itself, uh, while not really anything new, has a, has a neat feel to it. I'm actually, I, I like it. 
Um, I just need to see more. I feel like there's just so little to this teaser trailer for me to get a full opinion on it. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, I even feel like even if we do see a full trailer, I, I don't think I'll be able to really gauge it. Yeah. It, it's just, it's just, I think if this had come out, like when it was, when it was first rumored to come out, like, you know, eight to 10 years ago, this might have been a revolutionary type movie. Maybe. But, but since then, we've seen stuff like this a lot. Yeah. So, well, Nick, you know what I think your problem is? Mm. You're doubting best anime adapter, James Cameron. Just, <laughs> I am, I am <laughs> ju- doubting taller than average James Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and also, it's just, I mean, just the fact, too, it seems like I don't know if they have any confidence in this trailer because this trailer just seemed to come out of nowhere. You guys didn't even know it was out. No, I, I had no know. idea. I, I surprised that, like, my Facebook or my Twitter didn't alert me, like, hey, the fucking Alita Battle Angel trailer is mm-hmm. out. Um, yeah, no, seriously, because um, everyone was all hyped up about Jurassic World because I was getting, like, five days extra notice when it was coming out. And then it was like, oh, yeah, and Alita, too. Enjoy. Yeah, here's this thing. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, my my interest is peaked. Like I I had no opinion on it before, so now I'm kind of like, we'll see. We'll see I about it. I it was coming out to be honest. So Yeah, well, I I always in the back of my mind knew it was coming out cuz it's like it's it's been coming out for like the last, <laughs> you know, like I've I've been hearing rumors about this thing for the last, for years. So I've always been known like they're working on it. Uh so <laughs> nice to see some at least some progress. Uh, with that, I think we can bring this trailer talk to an end, uh, unless anyone has any other big-eyed robots they want to talk about. <laughs> uh, just, just these lies. I mean, if, she, if I met her in real life, I'd still take her, but it's just going to be just, right now. <laughs> my goodness, what big eyes you have, am I, am I right? All the better to eat you with them. You know, you know what I mean? We're getting out of here. All right, we'll take a small musical break. We'll be back with Future Man right after this. <laughs> Just a jump to the left. And welcome back to the UGO podcast. Boy, do we have a review for you today. My God. Travis, hmm? Travis, are you ready? I, I'm sure, yeah. Okay, because okay, we got to bring in our special guest, but okay. we can't, we got to, we got to go get him. He, unfortunately, he's a, a time travel expert, so we got to, we got to do a little time traveling ourselves. Get in the DeLorean. Let's go. Les, Les, are you there, buddy? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, thank God. I, th- I lost you a little bit in the uh, a little bit for the '80s, but I-, I think we finally found you. All right, just make sure all my bits are still here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll hopefully we don't have to switch yeah. parts. No, 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 cock piracy. Hello. <laughs> Why does my toe feel weird? Uh, but yes, uh, we brought on special guest Les Weiler of hey, the hey. TV Dudes, and uh, of course his his own podcast now, well, the the Good Die Young. Yep. Uh, which is on its fourth episode right now, I think? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I think episode four just came out. So episode five will be out Monday. And, uh, we've also been doing interviews every Thursday. So, uh, just, just got done, uh, putting up the interview for Matt Kiesler, the middleman himself. Nice. Awesome. I uh, really, really enjoying that podcast so far. If you guys have not seen the middleman, it is a great show and, uh, Les's passion for it is great to listen to. So I'd highly recommend it. Uh, and I believe if I kept track right, we're one episode away from me finding out who got fucking fish zombies over me. Yep. So <laughs> sure that. enough, I was actually I was so, editing that before I uh, I called you guys, and I was thinking like <laughs> like should I put a, a a dig at Nick in on the on the uh, <laughs> the promo for this like coming oh, Monday, oh, not Rose. Nick ties. <laughs> From salt in the wound, are we? Let's. I like it. You son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it is a great time. I highly recommend you check that out on iTunes as well. But we also, uh, love Les for his take on time travel. He loves ti- all sorts of time travel. And me and Travis just got done watching the great Hulu series, Future Man. We've come back from the year 2162. Everything that happens in the biotic wars is real. The game is a recruitment and training tool sent back in time to find the one person with the skills to save us. You're the first and only person to have beaten the game. That's the last Starfighter. It's the exact same plot as the movie. What's a, what's a movie? Is this part of your arsenal of weaponry? No, no, please don't. That, that's a, a signed... Oh my god! I paid my only Bitcoin for that! You're the key to stopping Elias Cronish. That man's research leads to the annihilation of the entire human race. No, he's working on a cure for herpes. It's what we're fighting here. A good fight. You're telling me that a cure for herpes is what brings down all of mankind. Holy shit. 
shit. Welcome to the resistance. Okay. Ah! Oh! We have to go back in time. We killed baby Crunch. Absolutely not. You cannot kill a baby. They're invincible. No, they are helpless and they're very soft. Perfect. Easy kill. If we can stop them from getting herpes, he never creates the cure. And we can stop this whole cycle before it even begins. We can't block him. Here's a little something I brought with me from the future. Yo, Tito! You know that new dance movie your little brother Michael was looking for? Well, wait till you see this! You need to blend in. It's Time Travel 101. Telling me you've been back and forth through time just to avoid killing me. Yeah. I thought that time travel was gonna be fun. This whole mission is insane. What did you think? This was a game? Yeah, because I bought it at a game store with my birthday money. So wait a second now. Does that make this Hulu and kill? It would make it, uh, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a weird cousin to Netflix and kill. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's just like Hulu, Hulu doesn't really. Hulu and MAME, maybe? <laughs> Hulu and Mame, not a, not a great. I don't think it's as great of a name, but we'll we'll stick with it. Uh, so for those who have not seen Future Man, Les, would you like to give a little bit of a plot synopsis? I uh, sorry, it's Last Starfighter, but time travel instead of space. Yeah, that's pretty much it. it you got it. That's We're got done. it in one. That's <laughs> that. <laughs> and to its credit, the main character actually like when the event happens to him and like people pop back in time to to recruit him because he's won a video game. It's straight up Last Starfighter. He looks at them and says, "No, this is Last Starfighter, though." And the, yeah, he's... what? Like it's a movie. What's a movie? No, seriously, this is Last Starfighter. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like he thinks it's a big joke. Yeah, uh, our main character played by uh, uh, Josh. What's his last name? Hutcherson, Hutcherson, yep, Hutcherson, yes, Peta from the Hunger Games, mm. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, if you do not have respect for Josh Hutcherson currently, if you, if you don't think you care for that dude, watch all of Future Man. I feel like it's good; it should change opinions on this guy because I didn't really care about Peta. He's he's bread. He is white bread. Seriously, <laughs> like, and uh, he gets so screwed over in Hunger Games, and like you spend so much of the time feeling sorry for him and hating him at the same time, and so to to see him both be hysterically funny have great timing pull off these almost slapstick action scenes um he really carries his part on this show beautifully yeah he, he he's uh doing really great uh we get to see him in his life a little bit before he gets whisked off onto this time trial adventure with his parent and he, he get, we get to see him a little bit with his parents uh played by ed ed begley and uh Glenn Headley. That's weird. Uh, and, weird combo there. Ed Begley Jr. Uh, Glenn Headley, yeah. Yeah, and it's 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 really good. Uh I I really like Ed Ed Begley Jr. for uh, especially as his dad. Mm-hmm. Uh this is a Futterman house. Uh he, they're they're really supportive in a way that's just like Geez, could you be a little like, a little less supportive of me? Like they even yeah, like, like try and cheer him up against. Yeah, and like I I can't tell you how much that hurt me, but I instantly forgive you because <laughs> that's what family's all about. Yes, yeah, the parents uh, are great. Like they remind me of of like the the parents in Easy A or the parents in Juno or something. Like occasionally you'll see teen movies where the parents just knock it out of the park. Like they're they're just not your normal trope parents you assume Everyday that they'll parents. be and yeah the the fact that like no his life is not going great but his parents are so fucked up supportive that like even when he's i think he's sitting at dinner and like mom dad did you did you not ever think i would amount to something more and and they're baffled mm-hmm. like what why, do you mean? why would you want to like, well i shouldn't be living with my parents we don't want you to move out. We we love having you here. Like they, yeah. they, they don't see any. You were problem. born up in that room, and I was yeah. born up in that room. And, and it's by like, God, uh, with any okay. luck, you will conceive your own child in that room. Re- Dad, stop, stop, <laughs> please, <laughs> please stop. That is one of those. That is one of those things. Of like, hey, uh, I was even looking at the screen. I'm like, hey, don't worry about it, buddy. A lot of people are living at uh, living home longer. You know, it's it's the economy, man. Yeah. And then suddenly his his dad goes into the whole conceiving conceived in the same room thing, and I'm like. I did. You should probably get out now. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> this is a weird scenario. Yeah, and, and his mom, Glenn Head, uh, Glenn Hetty, 
Headley, Glenn Headley, mm-hmm. um, who passed away earlier this year. I think five episodes in to filming, oh. uh, she passed away. Uh, there was an interview with Seth Rogen, uh, Nick and I were talking about a few days ago that, uh, where Rogen talked about having to rewrite the back half of the season that they'd already planned to have the parents role, take a back seat to the, the arc up of the, the main plot. But obviously they had to rewrite some stuff cause she shot five episodes and they just left those alone. But then she passed. And, uh, oddly mm-hmm. they said in the, uh, in the article that, uh, she had at various points in her career played, uh, the mother to four or five of the cast members in different roles. <laughs> And so <laughs> that's awesome. So when she died, it it really wrecked the set. Like so, like everyone has mommy issues. Like eh, almost all the actors had had some experience where they got to know her in a bonding. Like uh, she played their mom on a set, and and so yeah, it was a. I'm sure that was a weird thing. I had to look all that up after I think they dedicate the first episode or one of the episodes to her. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh... In the later half of the season, she's uh, noticeably absent. We get to see the dad a little mm-hmm. bit more, but it's like, hey, where did the mom go? Yeah, it's like, well, she doesn't want to see you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they do. They do find a way, a clever way to play it, which uh, which it does kind of work. Now, uh, my absolute favorite character, though, in the entire show is Wolf. Definitely. Oh my god, he is so the MVP. Well, the the two the two time travelers, like Tiger's uh, played by Eliza uh, uh, Eliza Coop. She's great. She's like the leader. Yep. But I her partner. I remember her from Happy Endings, and she was spectacular in that. Like she's hysterically funny, and I was glad to see her. But I didn't recognize Wolf from from what I know him from uh, the other Seth Rogen show, uh, Preacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he is one of those like once in a million years perfect casting. I don't know that anyone else could have quite knocked Wolf out of the park the way that that <laughs> guy does. He's so amazing on screen at all i mean and and part of the arc of his character isn't just that like he's a man out of time like they don't fit in 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 our times like they live in a sewer and they eat rats and like their dystopia is bad and when he arrives back in the past everyone loves him literally everyone they meet loves him every door opens Mm -hmm. for him he ends up backstage at shit like he ends up taking over parties Everywhere he goes, like people are just fawning over him, and and he's he gets a blowjob from a divorcee. Oh my god! <laughs> and, and and then just I will never be ashamed of that. <laughs> like, no, never... like he's so friggin' impressed by that and proud of it. Uh, yeah, Wolf is absolutely amazing and steals the show. In in a, I, I rewatched Future Man twice. Uh, I mean, I've I've seen it. Like I binge watched it, and then I immediately uh, had <laughs> told somebody about it. Uh, and we started watching it. And I ended up rewatching <laughs> most of it, and uh, it's. I mean, we're, we're, we haven't even gotten into some of the crazier shit in the plot, like, like the the fact that it's a time travel ripoff of a Last Starfighter is is the most banal, normal bit of this. Um, they come from a dystopian future where what what ended the human race is a herpes cure, <laughs> uh, made by yeah. Keith David, who is a, again. Like this thing is, I, no, I mean, none of these people are famous enough to name drop and call it star studded necessarily. I mean, you've got a subset of people who are going to know who Keith David is, but, but not everybody. He's one of those actors that you'll go, Oh, that guy. Um, mm-hmm. but really, I mean, all the way through, uh, God, Haley Joe Osment is in this. Um, I mean, every, there's, there's just so many really well cast roles. Um, the idiot brother from suburgatory. Uh, I cannot think of the actor's name, but uh, he plays the guy who has the Spuds McKenzie dog. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, no. And like throughout the whole series, like you keep seeing like people pop up and go, "Oh God, you're perfect. You're the best casting imaginable for that." Holy, how, how did you guys get this made? Uh, yeah, it like most Seth Rogen projects, I got three or four. Well, I, I got partway through it, whether it be a movie or a show or what. Like most Seth Rogen projects, I got partway through it and went why did I resist watching this? This is so much better than I expected it to be. I don't know why my expectation for Seth Rogen is consistently really low. And he <laughs> always seems to deliver more than I was looking for. Sausage Party was much better than it should have been <laughs> for the, for the one note joke it looked like. And, and I felt the same with future man. Um, yeah, I, uh, I honestly, I only hope ready player one is somewhere close to as fun as this is. Yeah. The, I think what helps Future Man is the fact that it's not 
uh, just the fact that, like, they make, uh, I, I mean, it's reference humor, uh, up to the gills, but, like, there's certain things where they just keep, they keep hitting a joke until, like, it is, it's, uh, like, funny again and again and again. Uh, I mean, they do we great keep going back to, like, what? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's mm. always a callback things to, like, you know, I mean, I like the, when they keep calling the, the, what, the mop a science wand, because they think, uh, Wolf yells it as a, <laughs> as a as a fight yell at one point, like science wand. It stabs two people. <laughs> uh, because well, they sent back this video game as a training to uh, training simulator uh, to find out who was the chosen one. Yeah, because so, video games are what warriors hone their skills on. They're not what you know. You don't make an avatar that's literally the opposite of your real life. Like I I, lo- <laughs> I love Hutcherson explaining or Futterman explaining the present day to them of like no 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 don't kill babies yeah don't kill babies i i do love it i think that's what makes us like josh too is that there's no moment of where he tries to pretend to be the savior no or anything like that he's like oh no no video games are just recreational they're like <laughs> i don't have any special fight skills at all he's kind of going along with them at the start not because he thinks he can really help but because someone has to slow them down mm-hmm. like they're gonna they're gonna wreck shit well, they they basically have no actual clue of what time travel is and how it works, even though they're the time travelers. Well, they they immediately start, like, killing people, and you kind of want to just yell at them, like, Hey, don't you know how the grandfather paradox works? Mm-hmm. Like, don't... Yeah, uh, like, there's no way your future's there. I mean, granted, they don't care. They don't want their future there at all. But, yeah, they just kind of start, right. <laughs> like, something's got to work. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's kind of, it's like you just want to tell and tell them like oh, you guys are doing so much damage to the timeline uh and yeah I, I do like that he like they they're so bad at fitting in that it basically josh is actually very integral in their plan succeeding yeah because he's the only one who can kind of you know uh cor- correct their behavior <laughs> it's like they're trying to get into a a frat house at one point a uh a <laughs> black fraternity and they, they, I mean, they immediately go like, you know what? We should co- color our faces. Them, yeah. Yeah, yes, Operation, uh, Operation Black Blackface. Uh, <laughs> no, and like, and Josh goes like, no, 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 no. It's All wrong. Who no. says? Literally everyone, everyone says. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when they're first walking up to the fraternity house before they know that it's a, it's an all black fraternity, and and J- he looks around at him and goes, okay, look, none of us know anything about 1966 or whatever year it is, but I have seen Animal House. So I am currently the expert here. <laughs> Until they open the door. And they're wrong. I do like that even even when the, they keep mentioning, like, uh, there's a lot of, like, humor that could go wrong in this frat house. Like, you know, joking about dressing up in blackface, it's funny. Actually doing blackface in the not, show not would so have not funny. been not, funny. Yeah. So, that was a, so that's a good move. You know, he... They, he tries to do this black guy, like, uh, you know, ebonics thing for a little bit, but then he's like, wait, what do I normally sound like? Like a nerd from Connecticut. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, God. And they're, they make a Cosby bit that is really nicely done. I was yes. amazed. Like, yep. Like, when you like, do the, do Cosby Spanish fly bit. He did a what? Whoa, he did a joke about that? <laughs> <laughs> he did. It's really creepy. Um, but yeah, then when he, he just kind of spitballs a bunch of shit. Uh, with like Jello, which doesn't have any connection to Cosby at this point in Cosby's nope. career at all. Like, I, mm-hmm. but but their reaction of that wasn't a bad impression. But man, you told that joke so bad, I don't like Bill Cosby anymore. Yeah, get used to that. Yeah, I guess, <laughs> yeah, you might as well get used to that. There's, so <laughs> there's things Good luck. That they fuck up in the future, like that they butterfly effect and and Lee, like that they can't fix. Like, uh, yeah, they can't fix uh, changing that, the app, fact that Black Apple, Black Apple, Blapple, no, <laughs> like, <laughs> Blue Apple. I don't think. <laughs> Blugel just happens. Uh, yeah, I don't know what where Blugel comes from. It's yeah, the fact that it's a continuation of the joke. It's further and further off. Yeah. Uh, and, and and they keep jumping back and forth in time with the with their time travel device. Uh, I, I was shocked at almost every turn. This show either got funnier or got deeper with its storyline. Um, it's an incredibly intricate plot driven show. I mean, they're they're jumping around through time, and time travel is always going to be an intricate headache of plot. But mm-hmm. there really is a lot of shit going on here. You're at various points not entirely sure if the rebellion's the right side. We actually don't really ever figure that out, to be honest. To be, well, to be fair, 
uh, we get an episode where it's kind of like we get to see the biotics because they send back biotics ti- while they're traveling back and forth, kind of back to the future style. They're, the biotics are tra- time traveling Terminator style. Mm-hmm. Where there's only a one way. And we get to uh, see a little bit from their Spoiler. perspective. Uh, got, several of the characters don't realize that at one point, but, uh, but yeah, they, yeah, they're, they're just literally dropping back. Like, and I love their explanation of, Oh God, no. Do you know how insanely dangerous it would be to bring a time travel device back to now? <laughs> <laughs> you can't leave technology like that laying around. Like, Oh yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> to be, to be fair, they, uh, the bi- biotics are the ones that are invested in the future remaining the same. Yes. So they are, uh, they're practicing clean time travel or as clean as possible. Yes. And, and uh, the, uh, the rebels, they don't give a fuck. No, yeah, the, like, the more they fuck up the timeline, the better off they might be. Yeah. And, and even though, even though the rebels are just kind of obstinate dicks, I mean, it, it <laughs> basically the rebels argument is the end of the world's end. Uh, yeah. <laughs> where, where Simon Pegg stands there drunk and goes, fuck your perfection. I'm be shitty. Cause can't. Yeah. And, uh, yep. and that's basically, that's basically what you find out that, that biotics are perfected humans and they're lab grown, but they're, they're genetically perfect. And the, re- the resistance is people who didn't want to be that. Perfected. <laughs> so, uh, so they're the savage land, uh, rather than being decanted in Brave New World. Yeah, I wanted to, uh, you know, call them the anti-vaxxers of the future, but uh, that doesn't make me want to root for them no, at all. It no. really does. Well, they they go into that basically, where it's like but when they, they do reveal what that they... destruction is, and they're like, <laughs> the main character's like, I don't think I'm on the right side anymore. Yeah, and yeah, and he's got a like. There's a minute of like, but I still like him. But God, you guys are dicks. I mean, like, you guys are like collectively dicks as as your way of life. <laughs> like it's such a rat hole. Yeah, it's oh, shut your uh, rat hole. Oh, uh, that. Uh, yeah. So the 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 plot was deeper than I expected. I mean, you 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 actually get kind of a weird argument about the future, and like the intentions are so good, but it goes so wrong, and it it keeps going wrong, even though everybody's intentions are good. Um, I mean, Keith David just wants to cure herpes, and then he figures out that he can cure other diseases, and. And with possums, with possum punk. semen, which oh is my god, magical. The possum semen jokes. I mean, they keep coming back. Keep like com- you never, you never think they're going to come back. They can't do one more possum Even semen joke. Even in the finale, they bring it, back a possum. I, mean, <laughs> you know, I know that that's partly what you sign. I'm signing up for on Rogan. I mean, I saw Sausage Party, but but again, for for the dick jokes and everything, I, I feel like you know, come for the dick jokes, but I'm ching. Stay <laughs> everything else. Um, I. I wor- I wonder sometimes uh, how many people don't sit down, like won't sit down for this show because of uh, the, the, the toilet humor of some mm-hmm. of it, which is crass, but is also funny, but but pushes a line sometimes. Um, but the rest of it well, is it, so good that our main character uh, jizzes on Wolf's <laughs> leg when they first show up in the first episode, <laughs> and I can already kind of see a bunch of people going like, "Yeah, I'm out." Yeah. Well, and when and, they and when they run the drone over his room, and it's just black light, like mm. just looks horrible. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Exactly. Like I, I, I get that that Rogan and and the other writers find it hysterical and and are going to put this stuff into every one of their movies, but. I, and and I I always kind of end up feeling like man am I being kind of a prude but but I just wonder sometimes like do you well, have to go for the American Pie joke like is, is there some kind of proven math or or statistics on like if you don't throw in a certain number of dick jokes in this movie it will fail uh, I mean I like I you know it's like if you actually saw the joke in Guardians of the Galaxy when he says, like, man, he sh- your your ship is filthy. <laughs> you should see if they put a black light in here, it looked like a Jackson Pollock painting. Yeah, but if instead they and just it, really done that scene. Yeah. But in, instead if they actually showed it, I'm like, no, no, it, it's funnier if you just say yeah. it and you imagine it don't rather than Yandu seeing scanner. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't have Yandu send a scanner in there to, to show me this. Uh, no, yeah. because then it's you know Star Lord's actually gross. Yeah, like yeah. not. <laughs> and I know that they were they were trying to make Futterman look extra sad at that point because uh, he is just friggin' useless at the start of it, and you kind of watch him grow. Um, but 
some of the jokes that they managed to pull besides the dick jokes uh, are are both amazing and uh, Grant pointed out when we discussed this on the TV dudes uh, that it kind of operates in the same area as Stranger Things in that uh, it's not just making like I'm doing a deep dive into the middleman and the middleman is almost entirely sewn together like a big cloth made out of references. Mm -hmm. This is not I mean, on the one hand, these characters are all incredibly pop culture savvy and are making references like or at least Futterman is. Yeah. Well, but at even the same the, time, even our time travelers are making references on accident. Yeah, even though yeah, they it, shouldn't be able to. Uh, but the show itself is also uh, homage recreating pieces of these movies. I mean, they're time traveling back into, you know, into basically the under uh, under the sea dance, uh, Enchantment Under the Sea, or or back <laughs> to the eighties, Back to the Future House. I mean, so so they're they're doing kind of larger meta. Uh, references the characters in those are making references that you get uh, so that you get the pleasure of both watching them nod back at something you love make a wink at something else you love and then make an overt like oh my god you're not going to terminator this are you joke about mm -hmm. you know so that you get you get a, a lot of levels of this happening i feel like stranger things that was one of the things that separated it out from just uh Oh wow, you guys really like the '80s, and you made a lot of you know name drop a lot of '80s shit. Uh, it's the reason Stranger Things didn't wasn't just a wedding singer, uh, but a horror movie. <laughs> like it, it, it did something deeper than just name check its references, and I feel like Future Man goes a step further than just name checking a lot of sci-fi and a lot of '80s. It it actually lets its characters live in these environments for a little while and fully react uh, because. Wolf in the eighties is the greatest. I, <laughs> I would watch a show of just Wolf in the eighties. We well, got a whole episode of it. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. And I was sitting there going like, Oh shit, I would follow Wolf. Like there, there could just be a whole show of like Wolf's lost years. Cause time travels a motherfucker, man. Mm -hmm. Um, I love that later on in the series, people start disappearing for like years at a time and coming back later that day. Cause time travel. And, mm -hmm. uh, right. And yeah, J Futterman's Josh Futterman's, uh, like freak out each time of like no man you left this morning how do you what do you mean you've had like a multi-year cocaine addiction I saw <laughs> go oh, yeah god wolf's uh wolf's entire at uh, cory wolfhart and his Corey entire uh, him him sending his idiot buddy to go off and live with oj oh jeez it's just an offhand reference <laughs> what do you do Got a friend in Brentwood. You can go stay on his couch in his guest house. It'll be your life will be simpler now. Like, no, it, <laughs> no. Uh, they're uh, yeah, they're fake rest or they're not fake, but they're they're fucked up illegal restaurant that they run. Mm -hmm. uh, wolf waxing poetic about cocaine addiction. Like, there's just no downside if you have an opportunity to do it. You should. Like, yeah. what? No, man, there is a that's, definite that's, fucking downside. Definitely not right. All of the 80s has a downside. It's the 90s, and we did it already. Um, <laughs> well, that's where he does. Aftermath. He crashes in the 90s, God, and he has to, like... Kick shit out of him, man. Yeah, the 90s are harsh. Uh, <laughs> I, oh God, I do it, love that Wolf keeps, like, us escalating his drug use, because he starts with pot. Remember mm -hmm. the, the pot? He, yeah. What were they? A Claire or something? He actually, he actually finds the meth. Uh, or, or rather, the get stuck with the drug dealers for a minute. Mm -hmm. In the Breaking Bad episode, where like he gets stuck with like, oh my god, meth is amazing. And and in that scene, he he looks at the drug dealers and says, "Explain to me everything about." I think the guy like he just starts to leave, and the guy's like, "Dude, you, you're not leaving. You just did a lot of meth. Don't you know how drug deals work?" No, tell me everything. And the guy no. pulls down a whiteboard. <laughs> and explains, like, in a flow chart, the mechanics of the entire drug trade, like, traffic style. <laughs> like, do you get it? I, I, I've never understood. Like, what Wolf said, I, I've, I've never understood anything so clear in my entire life. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, uh, that guy is an amazing character. It, it, that, he's an amazing character played by an amazing actor that I, I hope goes on and does more stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, he gets, he gets a chance to be, like, a great, like, this great chef. Like he's like uh, applying skills or whatever in one episode. Like he's he's really le like just to make these truffles or whatever for, like for a mission. But he ends up becoming this amazing chef right out of nowhere. Yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> like his true and, calling. Like, 
It, yeah, this is true. This is true calling. And he, and when he gets lost <laughs> in the eighties, he opens up a fucking restaurant in, in which he kids kidnaps his customers. It's still, <laughs> yeah, I it's love like the idea. It's a fucking fight club of restaurants. I love it. Uh, <laughs> well, and, and then he literally tries to do the truffle dome uh, when his his coke addiction gets too out of control. <laughs> When he can't taste anything anymore. That's just, oh god, that's right. That's right. He Stevie Nicks himself. <laughs> I can't smell or taste anything. <laughs> oh. Well, and, and they, oh, I, I keep remembering whole ludicrous side plots of like, oh shit, we haven't even talked about James Cameron. No. Oh, oh my god, that's my favorite episode. Also, villain James Cameron, you yes. mean? James Cameron, good at marriage, James Cameron. Good at marriage, James Cameron. <laughs> Taller than average, James Cameron. Uh, that one's Pandora's mail mailbox. Oh, that one's yeah. got to be my favorite episode, I think. It's pretty Sigourney good. E, the AI that runs his house. Yeah, it's an acronym spelling out Sigorn E. <laughs> and, uh, and the fact that the Sigourney. I like <laughs> I was it's, it's fact about that. where Wolf realizes that he's just being ordered around by Tiger, and mm-hmm. and then bonds with Sigourney, who's just being mm-hmm. ordered around by uh yeah uh amateur linguist James Cameron. <laughs> Well, too, in the fact that the time trial devices run on Cameronium. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which I did not get at first. Well, no, not until they say it. It's like, oh, that makes sense on so many levels. But they, but they said something about, like, uh, you know, if, if, if normal, like, phosphorescent organisms come from the bottom of the ocean, you know, this stuff comes from, like, this much further deep. So unless you have access to the deep. And I was like, I, my first thought was, like, Cameronium, Mariana Trench. Yep. Okay. Okay. He has that. Mm-hmm. Weird obsession with the <laughs> wolf learning not be and then making fun of it is spectacular. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep, shit in Navi for the rest of the series every once in a while. And, and like Josh keeps stopping and like, Wolf learn Navi? What the fuck? <laughs> uh, oh god, when they, when they have to read, well, they, they end up having to deal with James Cameron because they run out of the shit, the Cameronium that runs their time travel device. Uh, and, but when they get, raw Cameronium that obviously didn't come from the future and get processed or whatever, uh, things go a little wild in the time travel resulting in <laughs> something I cannot believe that they, they left the joke alone. Yep. It stays that way for the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they swap junk and they, they swap scars, which is cool. <laughs> but then, uh-huh. yeah, as soon as they take a step forward and you see Josh Hutcherson go, whoa, <laughs> what hey, the fuck? he's got Wolf's uh, dick. <laughs> yeah, and so for the rest of it, cock pirate. <laughs> Wolf calls him cock pirate. For the- Wolf's desperate, like, no, we have to jump again. Man, what if we swap parts? I don't care. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and that's why it goes on for like the rest of every single time traveler. It's like, wait, wait, ah, damn it, oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, like he, I think he eventually gets his scar back and still is like, son of a bitch. He doesn't even have three years main. This pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> oh. The show is just, well, and then and later on, Hutcherson runs into himself in a timeline, and uh, you can tell them apart because one of them does not have his own penis. Yep. Yeah. Which is, which, like, that, and, that his, and his doppelganger's reaction when he sees it is, they said it wasn't possible. They said it was impossible. Mm-hmm. No, that, well, because he's super rich, and so you immediately know that, like, oh, God, you probably spent, like, a year haranguing doctors about trying to get a bigger deck. How, fine, how much would it cost? No, sir, it's not possible. <laughs> like clearly I, it is. Yeah, that's a, a a good episode too where Josh has an evil doppelganger Juice which is yes. just amazing. Like the fact that like they named him Juice. So we what? are we should go over the whole uh, the amount of cop killing that goes on in the show. Dude, we haven't oh. even mentioned the cop, which oh, is great. Shit. Yes, with his uh his partner Santiago and her his widow uh swollen swollen with, with, with child swollen with belly and, swollen with child. Yeah, Stop because that. <laughs> Vincent Skarsgård, that's the yes. detect- detective. And yeah, in the first episode, Wolf throws a fucking mine at their cop car as they come to try and arrest them for beating up bikers, and Wolf kills the fuck out of his partner. <laughs> And just like, dude, what the hell? You can't just go around and kill the, like, you, you kill the cop. Uh, we kill the cop. Like, no, 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 no. We did not kill the cop. <laughs> and we aren't going to do it anymore. You just said we. <laughs> you just said Stop, we. Shut. And I love later on, uh, Wolf yells at Skarsgård, the surviving cop, of like, no, man, you drove over a fucking mine. I mean, stupid. <laughs> like, 
Like, no, man, uh, this is not entirely on the cop, really. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Who drives over you, a mine? Threw a piece of future technology at his car. He's like, I mean, who drives towards a cluster mine? Like, <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, the, the, the whisker claw marks that, that Skarsgård gets, uh, they, they accrue over the show until the end. He's just mm-hmm. this ruined old man cop that everybody calls whiskers. Uh, <laughs> And, and he's, of course, everybody just thinks he's crazy because he just keeps seeing people vanish and like trying to hunt down the people that, that have killed his partner. Mm-hmm. And his obsessive thing, uh, I think when he's interviewing Josh's mom, uh, Glenn Hedley looks at him and, uh, he starts to say, you know, my partner Santiago, wife, belly, sw-, and she finishes it like swollen with child. He's, How would you know? Like, you, <laughs> you said say it, it a lot. <laughs> I, I, and then she goes, I don't think you realize you're saying it. Like, <laughs> Like, I love another character pointing out that, Matt, do you know that you're compulsively doing that? Like, I don't think you do. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it's I, great. Uh, he, we get to see his, uh, his, like, fan, like, or his, like, his string theory board of, like, all the connected events later in the, uh, police station. Mm-hmm. And Tiger and Wolf use it for an argument. Yes. To blame it, each other. It's great. Yeah, which, yeah, like, well, I didn't do this that did that that led to this that led to th- I'm, I'm a sucker for the crazy conspiracy yarn board anyway. Uh-huh. Like, I, I, I love that trope. Uh, I always love it when the characters have a secret room or whatever, or they, you know, go to a hidden storage locker and open it up and there's their case they're not supposed to be working on. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I love seeing that shit mapped out. And so, so yeah, seeing it was great and, and, and seeing little pieces that, that you recognize, but then having one of the main characters like stand back from it and go, Oh shit. We caused all of this. <laughs> yeah. We're, like, we're kind of awful. Just we are totally to blame for this crap. Uh, is, it was just great. Um, and they keep, I mean, they really do. They keep changing shit in the past so that they kind of keep back to the future, like, you know, popping back into the present and stuff's completely different. And the, the realization of how it's not just that, uh, Wolf and Tiger know that they have signed on, to if they succeed in their mission, they will be the only two people that know about the dystopia. They will have grown up eating rats and living in this like fucked up hell hole of a future that if they succeed, no one will live in and will not ever have existed. And they'll be the only two people that have any memories of this, of this PTSD inducing like hellscape. Uh, and they, but they signed on for that. They know that like, that's, that's just part of it. If you succeed, no one you've ever met will, ever have lived basically yeah and they're fine with that josh didn't really sign on for that (laughs) uh but even without succeeding at the mission they do that to him anyway like that happens almost immediately as soon as they jump back to the 60s and then back to the present he's almost immediately in a life where and he kind of has a breakdown about it midway through where he's going to have to fake every conversation for the rest of his life yeah a little bit because he doesn't know the references people are making, and he wasn't – like, they fucked up history. Like, you know, he looks down at his phone like, what's a black apple? And they're like, honey, they're black apples. Nobody calls them black apples. You told us that. Could be. Yeah, only old people call them black apples. Yeah, only old people call them that. I mean, so he's going to have to, you know, kind of half fake his way. And and you kind of see the the annoyance of it. I mean, he's – well, when they jump back and he's he's Jewish or j Futs or whatever – and has he's he's a millionaire and a complete douchebag. Um, that one he's like, okay, fine, fine, I'll fake the conversation. This is awesome. Uh, <laughs> but prior, prior to that, it's just a pain in the ass. Like, well, crap. I just kind of made a slightly different present. Well, it, it reminds me of the Simpsons Treehouse of Horrors, where like they end up going to an alternate world and finally just settling for it. Of like, it's raining donuts. Everybody has a lizard tongue. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'll call this where cool. Yeah, good enough. Yeah, close enough. I <laughs> I do like the fact that uh, I think I really like Josh for a couple reasons. Uh, one, it's just it's very sympathetic being in that situation of like every time he travels back to his own time 
and it's like, hey, where's Steve? Oh, who's Steve? Like, oh, fuck, I made Steve not exist. Yep. That sucks. <laughs> I like Steve. And it's like, and it's, and it's, you're right. They never go back and fix any of it. Everything they, everything they change is a permanent change. Well, they also don't have time because they're like constantly going back and forth between timelines. So we're going to change it every single time. It'd be exhausting. I also like him because he is very straight up and aware that like, uh, of his limitations and stuff. He, <laughs> he knows that like, you know, he plays the biotic wars. Because it's the only game no one's ever beat. Because he's kind of a douche like that. Well, that's the only... Like, that's what I... At first, I'm like, oh, man, you, you stupid PC gamer. <laughs> and your freaking elitism. Yeah. And... But yeah, he, he later... Yeah, like Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, but later he... Uh, he... He... Talk, when he's talking with his parents, he's like, you know, don't you think I uh, I should be doing something more with my life or whatever? Like, what about your game? You're the mm-hmm. best at your game. It's like, yeah, but it's a game. It doesn't mean anything. Like, he's very open and aware that the game is just for that. him to like for him to unwind. It's not a thing like that he's invested his whole life into, which I thought like would have been the easy yeah. joke to make. Yeah, he's he's a realist. Like, yeah, to have him be. Uh this kind of super fervent fanboy about it. Like, yeah, he doesn't think he's the savior. He understand. He's really aware that his life has not gone great, even though his parents don't have kind of any ambition for him. He realizes that like, he probably should I'm not do anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That he's just getting along. I mean, he, like everybody keeps, you know, you, you work at the science lab and like, or, you know, you're, you you're lives. curing disease. You're saving lives. Like, Am I? Like, well, you're mopping up after people that save lives. Uh, <laughs> not the same. Yeah. Uh, oh god, the amount of possums. Uh, <laughs> so, the amount of possums. So many possums. And then when Wolf and Tiger finally show up, he's very honest with them up, up front. Like, mm-hmm. there's no, like, another, another show would have done a whole episode where he tries to pretend to be the savior and pretend to be a warrior and I have really- them. I really thought he was going to fake badassery or, or get into it, you know. Nope, he doesn't lie about it at all. Like, like he's really upfront. Well, even they wouldn't have fallen for that for very long because Wolf would have just kicked his ass. Yeah. I, and- uh, I really enjoy that the, the, the stuff that they yell in the video game is, is perfectly video game like, you know, uh, neck stab, mm-hmm. uh, arm mm-hmm. rip. And it's just all of these, like, blood, you know, fatality kind of, like, blood killing crazy uh gory things to yell and it's all wolf like, i didn't realize it when he's first playing the game it's 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 wolf and tiger i mean it's those two actors yes mm-hmm. uh but through the entire show every single time they fight they yell that shit every time mm-hmm. so Next that like stab. like whenever wolf yeah whenever wolf really like runs at a, at a cop or something like he yells neck stab and it stabs the dude in the neck or you know spine rip and like I think, like, no! one, I think my favorite one is reach around. <laughs> oh, God, that's right. That's right. Uh, when I think that's when they're fighting the bikers. Um, oh, here's your secret handshake. Yeah, the <laughs> wolf's just rage and pen. Uh, every character on the show is is fun to follow so that I'm never sad whenever we, we trail off anybody else. Even Haley Joe Osment's uh, villain-ish character. Uh, just gets goofier and goofier and like like there's never a point where somebody turns up and i go oh god damn it we're gonna have to <laughs> suffer through minutes of wrapping your plot up Fuck. Mm-hmm. um everybody's kind of a joy to to watch and the whole show kind of moves at the same manic pace um i'm really glad hulu did not do their normal thing i, I don't know what made them decide to drop this all at once that's not their mo on almost any other show um Runaway is currently doling out a week at a time. But I am really glad they did because uh, uh, Punisher, I think, dropped the same weekend. And I, I just really didn't want to watch Punisher. It just really wasn't the – that didn't look like the fun 13 hours that I wanted. Uh, <laughs> and Future Man was this just ridiculous, like, cock pirate science wand, time-traveling Cameronium <laughs> – uh with josh hutcherson running through the whole thing and ed begley jr trying to hug everybody like i just sat there with my like every time i was i'd leave the room and come back and go okay usually if i do that in a show i can follow how you got from (laughs) there i've got to rewind this what did you guys do in 30 seconds that are we in the 60s now we are what the fuck (laughs) we also killed some cops 
and I didn't see social media go crazy about it that weekend. Like I, I almost wanted to like, what, what is everybody else doing? Cause for real guys, like the world is a dark and shitty place and we should all watch future man right now. Really? Cause I was uh, actually seeing a lot, but maybe that's cause I'm on the hellscape that is Tumblr. So that explains. Yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, at least on my Facebook, it was just all, uh, Punisher was coming out. Uh, and, and that was what everybody was seemed to be discussing. Uh, and then I, and I saw like one friend go, man, I, I watched future man. That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to be like, yes, that everyone watch an episode of this. Like, if you've ever laughed at any goofy, stupid '80s, like this is bound to make you smile. It, it it hits the same vibe for me as Back to the Future of just like absolutely goofy, uh, madcap, real fun with their tropes. Oh sure, yeah, <laughs> absolutely fantastic. I. I mean, and then of course, I I I do enjoy watching Josh, even though he's the most normal out of the crew. Um, I like how he has to wrangle, he has to just basically play babysitter to these two people. Mm-hmm. I mean, remember when Tiger ha- saw that baby for the first time? Oh, she wanted to kill it. Oh my god, I laughed so yeah. hard. It's like, get what, uh, give me that baby. So- <laughs> I want to touch it. <laughs> you with the baby, give it to me. <laughs> and like Josh comes up, like, oh, uh, you know, she, it's fine. She's she, she's harmless. No, I'm not. I've killed hundreds. <laughs> Give me the baby, because <laughs> she would not accept That's that. Right. <laughs> uh, you can't just say the baby. Sure, I can. Yeah, I just, she's harmless. No, I killed hundreds. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, her slowly, her slowly learning to value life, and like Wolf learning about himself. Like all the characters have arcs that that kind of get they don't feel shoehorned in. Like they they legitimately feel like they're happening to these people while they try to do these missions. Uh, like Wolf manages to have his crisis and, and go off and do his eighties thing without it feeling like that episode seven or eight moment in the Netflix series where we're going to lull like a motherfucker for two. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, uh, and then come back. like it didn't feel like a grinding halt for the series. Uh, and most of the time that's, that's that point in the scripts for me. Like, this is the point where, like, oh, okay, the whole show's going to take a breather. I'm going to go to the bathroom for a minute. You guys figure out when we're going to get back to the end of the plot. It's uh, it's like the binge-watch version of the last 15 minutes of, like, an A-Team episode. Like, up 45 minutes, the world is absolutely screwed. We're going to go to commercial and solve that in the last 15. Um, and and I, I always just kind of feel like there's that, that lull spot in, like, almost every Marvel Netflix show. Um, there's there's just this this dead spot in the in the pacing where they decide to be a different show for the last third and future man never did that future man just barrels right through it well i think Uh, it helps that it's 30 minutes long too that they're they're 30 minute long episodes that's the other thing yeah they are i for being as plot heavy as it was i really i really thought it was going to be longer episodes Mm -hmm. but yeah they're 30 minutes right and you, you they just they just clip right along one of the rare shows i got done with the binge like every time hulu's not Everybody using Hulu won't be surprised when I say this. Uh, Hulu's <laughs> interface is god awful, and the new interface is actually worse. Um, <laughs> so, like I found myself watching like the one thing I can find on Hulu sometimes. Like I meant to watch the Orville, but I guess we're watching Good Doctor. And uh, <laughs> so I I just kept seeing like literally the next episode. You know, oh hey, there's a seventh one. Cool. Oh cool, there's an eighth one. And, <laughs> I had no point, like I had no point did I want to risk stepping back and dealing with Hulu uh to to see how many total episodes there were on like a details page so mm-hmm. I just kind of kept going just, oh cool there's a tenth oh my <laughs> god how many of them are there <laughs> like I knew it had to end at some point but you know surprise who knows at the end you just time travel back and you just for- you forgot you watched the first one you just keep going in this whole loop I mean, I, I really restarted <laughs> <laughs> you did uh but yeah, I, uh, there's a couple other things I wanted to mention, uh, but I wanted to keep it for a spoiler section because they deal with the end of the the show. Well, geez, we've been jumping around this plot as much as they jumped around time. Yeah, yes, it's kind of hard not to. Because <laughs> the plot, it's not like the plot. Fo- I mean, if it does flow in a, uh, you know, a a regular fashion, they go from like one conflict to the next to the next to solving problems. But it's kind of hard to remember. It's so crazy. It's hard to remember what comes first. Uh, 
But I do want to mention that the ending is the only part of the show that I really have a, a little bit of an issue with. And the only thing I really I'm a little disappointed by is that the end feels like the final episode feels like the second from last episode from another show. Like it feels like there's a finale that they're building to that doesn't quite show up in this show. Yeah, I could see that. They kind of have no country for old men. It. I mean, there there's a bunch of like plot threads that, of course, have not been answered yet, and it's like, oh, well, here, wait for season two, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like, yeah, but like, I, I don't know. I expected like a something bigger or like, uh, uh you know, s- something a little more finite. Yeah. Well, it. it <sighs> I mean, it is impactful with the characters because the characters get a big resolution uh, with themselves, like, you know, Tiger and Wolf getting back together uh, after being lost, you know, lost in their own perspective times for so long. Them tr- trying to recruit people from, like, their own uh, time again. Like, there's some good character resolution stuff going on there. I just think, like, you know, plot-wise, I expected a little bit something more, like, bigger to happen. But, I don't know. Les, what did you think about the ending? Um, my fear is that there's not going to be a season two. Yeah. And so I, I would have rather it wrapped like a mini series and then, and then figure out what you want to do next if, if that comes up. And, and I'm hopeful that they do get a season two and that whatever they've got planned, uh, really gets to go. But yeah, that was the, uh, I, I don't think I noticed it quite as much as cause I, there was going to be a letdown no matter what when this stopped. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, (laughs) Like I just kind of wanted this to keep rolling. Like wrap this up and move on to the next boss. Like let's let's do this. Um, but but yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I it it felt either like an epilogue episode or the penultimate. But yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. So like, and that's that's like basically my only complaint I really have about the series. I know it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea just because not everyone's so very down with the whole ref- reference humor. Mm-hmm. And it is very juvenile. Like, if you aren't down for South Park, I wouldn't try this. Uh, uh, I don't, I actually don't know about that because, yeah, there is a lot of potty humor, but it is really spread out to the point where, like, it hits you and it's like, okay, that was funny. Don't do it again. But it was funny. <laughs> it was funny this time. Yeah. And they keep kind of getting away yeah. with it. And they do. They just, they do know the timing of when they should do it. Yeah, because you're you're right. Like when they when they go there, they go a little too far, and it's a shocking. Like, oh shit, yeah, that's a that's a lot of cum on a, another person <laughs> wow. who's not having sex. Uh, yeah, and then uh, but yeah, then they then they won't make a joke like that for quite some time, uh, and the rest of the humor will will just kind of be standard nerd fare. Uh, and yeah, like you say, I know that there's there's people that, that this is not going to be their thing, but there's a lot of people that I feel like this is going to be right up their alley, and and I, I really hope people give it a shot. I enjoyed I enjoyed it far more than I thought I would. Mm-hmm. Indeed, it actually it ended up being a a quick last addition to my top ten for the year. <laughs> In terms of just like wow, that came out of nowhere and was far better. I remember hearing about them making this and going, yeah, maybe <laughs> like that that might be funny or that might suck. At, at no no point in there did I think that might be amazing. Uh, I, I just kind of figured like, oh, yeah, that, that could be worth a watch. I figured it'd be as funny as like powerless. Right. I mostly just thought like, oh, hey, it's something on Hulu. I'm OK. Uh, yeah, I and I shouldn't do that. Their production values have gotten better and better. Um, I mean, Handmaid's Tale was great, but obviously completely different than this. But I know Hulu can make a, a damn good looking show. Uh, but, but yet I keep thinking of them as this like inept clusterfuck because their user experience is an inept clusterfuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, they're going to have to do some little more work to not be known as Netflix's little brother at some point, but yeah. Um, Disney is about to own now 60% of them or something. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if the Fox deal goes through, Disney will own a much larger stake in Hulu. Okay. If the Fox deal goes through, Disney owns a little bit of everything. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else we wanted to mention before we go into a spoiler section? So, <laughs> there's so many things. How can I pick one thing? Or anything else that didn't work for anybody? Because I know we all were basically just gushing about how much we loved this show. Yeah. But, like anything else? I, I, it took me I a long really time actually to it. like Tiger. Her yeah. plot was really slow going to the point where I'm like, okay, you're playing a character that's like, you're necessary, but I don't really, you're character wise, I don't know why you're here. 
Because she's like, oh my god, I, I had to sacrifice people to get where I am, and now it's not going well. I'm like, yeah, that's so cliche. But she yeah. really turns around to having really great character moments she, later on. She almost fell off for me um, as Wolf was starting to break away, uh, because she's the one that's having to desperately hold the the stupid, like, no, soldier, mm-hmm. uh, oh, we gotta stay on mission, and, and it makes her the least fun stick-in-the-mud character. And she didn't get great for me again until until she has the moment with the guy at the park uh, where he gives her the advice of like, you know, you got to let him you got to set him free. And if mm-hmm. he comes back like that, that advice. And she points out that, yeah, you seem like an idiot that just ate your dog. <laughs> and, uh, and then five minutes later, she gets the same advice, but opposite. Yes. Opposite of that. And uh, yeah, from the oh, God, that whole, whole crazy thing yep, that um, happened. <laughs> um and so uh, around that part was was where her character started finding herself again and and her story started to work for me uh because she got to do something besides just tell other characters to not go have their plot yeah. <laughs> make the cake but don't eat it yeah <laughs> <laughs> so if i were to give this show a rating uh, it is going to have to be my own personal rating of recommendation again, so take that in mind. But it ha- it's going to have to be uh, five uh, <laughs> uh, taller than average James Camerons out of five. <laughs> uh, I really like this show. I couldn't uh, I I couldn't help but recommend it to basically anybody. Maybe it might, I, I would at least try it. It is man, I, I I laughed so hard at this character. You gotta you gotta see the guy that plays Wolf. If you don't love Wolf, I'm not sure what you're watching. We, we TV have nothing for. to agree on then. I don't know what we. I, we're looking for stuff that's different out of uh, out of TV, I guess. Um, what would you rate it, Les? Um, let's see. I was trying to look up the Navi word for stars. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's not one, but there's one yeah, for website. Not one, but. Which makes total sense if you ask uh, amateur oceanographer. <laughs> <laughs> Good at marriage, Jane. Oh God, that cracked me up. Um, yeah, I I know there's got to be stuff wrong with it. If I went back and set through it, there were a couple of times where the I, I just wish they hadn't made the dick joke they made. But at the same time, the cock piracy joke is stunningly funny. Like, like <laughs> stepbrothers fart scene funny. Like, how is that funny? I feel bad for laughing this hard. I don't. Um, that was funny. But, but Jesus. Uh, yeah, I think I'd have to give it four out of five stars. I, I feel like I, I wish it had just wrapped as a perfect miniseries. I also wish it had just kept going endlessly. Uh, overall, I just really hope it gets a season two. I have no idea how much it costs to make. Mm-hmm. <laughs> how about you, Travis? I gotta say, like, this is one of those things that I remember seeing it just vaguely on Tumblr. I'm like, oh, well, maybe I'll watch that someday, but most likely not. And then I knew I was doomed when Nick's like, hey, you hear about this show? I'm like, ah, fuck me. I'm gonna have to watch this now. (laughs) Because I don't have any choice. (laughs) Uh, But no, it is so funny and it is so well, uh, so well paced that it, it does almost seem that with any other character besides Wolf, that whole entire episode of just him stuck in the 80s would not have worked. Like, that's how well this show is done. They're like, yeah, let's just kind of pause here for a moment, have nothing to do with anything, and just explain where this character was for a decade. That'll be fine, right? And it is. <laughs> and that kind of just shows how well they did these characters. They're like, no, 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 we we know what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. So overall, though, I did kind of feel a little bummed at the ending. In fact, that's like, oh, that's lackluster, but well... I'm gonna give it, let's see, nine buckets of possum cum. Ah, oh, that's it. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, with that, uh, thank you so much for listening. If you don't want to stick around for, uh, the spoiler talk, if you want to just straight go to watch, to watch Future Man right now, do it. Uh, I understand. I totally get that impulse. Uh, thank you so much for listening. You can check some of our back catalog on, uh, the UGO podcast on our iTunes feed. Uh, you know, check us out there. Maybe follow us on Facebook. You know, follow us on Twitter at UGO Podcast. Our Instagram's the same thing. Or maybe just shoot us a message uh, for that email at unapologeticgeekout at gmail.com. Les, where can the people find you? Um, I can be found at thetvdudes.com or at thegoodiyoungtv.com. 
Yes, both both very other great, very good podcasts that you should find the time. If even if you need a time travel to find the time to, to listen to those podcasts, I would highly recommend it. And with that, we're going to take a small musical break and be back with a quick spoiler section right after this. Welcome back to the spoiler section for Future Man. Uh, spoilers, he ends up in the future. Actually, spoilers, he ends up trying almost fucking his mom. Or did he fuck his mom? <laughs> Actually, I don't know if that where he ends up by the end of this. But no, nope, no, nope, he he, <laughs> he pukes. He doesn't. <laughs> he curls up fetal in the floor. I wasn't sure how far they got before that scene. So let's talk. About, yeah, you know what? Let's talk about that for a minute too. Oh. <laughs> like they. Oh, I love the fact that. He meets his parents, and it's like, oh, cool, I get to hang out with my dad. And it's like, okay, uh, I, I mean, I get this impulse that he wants to hang out with his dad for a little mm-hmm. bit. But then he sees, like, you know, I, his his mom show up, and it's like, oh, shit, I should totally <coughs> try and get them to be together. I'm like, why are you doing this? <laughs> why are you doing this? Like, <laughs> Well, and he realized very quickly, like, like, oh, wait, you know what? I'm not going to encourage you. Like, I, I do like that he stops and, and says... You know what? Uh, maybe that's not a decision I should influence. Mm-hmm. You just because uh, I think his dad's like oh, I'm thinking about getting a vasectomy. Uh, you know, I got a friend that says he'll do it for free if he can practice on me. Some horrible plan, yeah. <laughs> but but he starts to like, hey, maybe you shouldn't. I'm just gonna leave this decision alone. I'm just not gonna mess with the future. Uh, but the guy they got to play, young Ed Begley Jr., does the mannerisms. And all of it so well. Like, he's so perfectly Josh's dad. Oh, mm-hmm. all the young actors. They, they get a young, uh, I forget the guy that they, to, to play young Keith David. Man, he does a great job yes. playing a Keith David type, yeah. like, performance. That uh, dance off is fucking awesome. <laughs> uh, oh my god, I want a dance off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just great. Um, when he, well, when he thinks he's about to make, like, I love that he's standing there and realizes, uh, as he's going to accidentally cock block his dad, uh, and, and realizes, like, oh crap, I'm about to make fly myself. And, <laughs> and immediately tries to stop it. Like, like, he doesn't just, he doesn't even try to play coy about it. Like, he shuts his, or who he thinks is his mom. Um, uh, Lisa, my wife, immediately, like, she was watching it with me and she immediately caught it of like, those girls haven't said their names. Yeah. You're just assuming the blonde. And, uh, and I think I didn't Nick walked that away from that scene. Yeah, I, I missed, I missed it. And Travis was the one to clue me in like, oh yeah, this is totally about to happen. Yeah. Well, I, but I like, he tries to not. I mean, he realizes like, you know, whoa, I should back away from this. Cause he, I mean, he's completely wrecked at that party, but he just tries to shut her down of like, nope, you should not like me. That's right. Hate me. Go away. Uh, but, but yeah, when he, <laughs> He isn't going to do anything with the other girl, really. And then she notices uh, his stolen penis. <laughs> of like, well, it was, oh my god! <laughs> like, I had forgotten about it at that point. It was like, holy shit, man! That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, that's happening. <laughs> that's happening, dude. Yeah, that would totally happen. Um, but. But yes, as soon as it clicks, his immediate response is vomit. Like he throws up <laughs> on her immediately, and uh, yep, which I thought curls was up in the fetal crazy. position. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just catatonic, <laughs> like like rocking in the floor while she. Which I'm sure that her holding him and petting his head was not helping with that moment. Uh, She's mothering <laughs> him. Well, then the dad comes in and he starts doing it too. Yes, like it's and, okay, and, big guy. Let it out. And, uh, and the cupcakes he threw up on her is her pet is his is how the his mom's pet name came about. Like it's the mm-hmm. most awkward of like, oh god, yeah. So your whole awkward almost fucked your mom vomit thing is actually their meat cute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Although something I thought of that is a little weird. So say he had fucked his mom. Would technically, whose sperm is it? I don't want to put it any other way, but I mean, he has Wolf's genitalia, so I don't know how this works. Would Wolf be his secret dad? Like, that would be weird. (laughs) Now Les is like, oh my god, now there's more strings to add to the board. This is like, uh, this is like when they stand on the sidewalk in Primer and argue about how cell phones work. Uh, there's, there's a scene in Primer where one of them takes his cell phone to the future. 
and you sh- you're not supposed to take your phones. And his phone rings, and he looks at him like, so is that someone from the past calling you? Is that <laughs> is, is that the other you in the present? Is his phone ringing? How the fuck do cell phones work? And they're like, I, I, I don't know, dude. I don't know how cell phones work. Um, so, phones yeah, work like, I, I have a basic understanding of, of, you know, how my downstairs operates, but, uh, but yeah, I really don't know if that would be, uh, Futterman's sperm or Wolf's sperm. <laughs> don't, I had to bring it up. I had to bring it up, but now it's there. Damn, uh, everyone deal a with A plot them. thread for season two. <laughs> a plot thread. <laughs> um, yeah, so we do get back to the f- the future at some point, and they uh, they actually convinced uh, Cronish, uh, Keith David's character, to go off and be happy with the love of his life, Leslie, uh, who turns out <laughs> to be a man, which was very interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and so they my, think my name's Leslie. That was easy. that was an easy give for me. I was like, yeah, this is going to work out the mm-hmm. way y'all think. Like, uh, I'm just <laughs> only ever ever my name and shows if they're going to pull that. So yeah, anytime I, anytime I hear a character named Leslie, I'm like, Oh, you're only doing this to gender swap the character as a, like it's the, it's Pat, you know, of, of names. Mm-hmm. Like it's a gender non civic. Yeah. Also a very funny dead cat joke in that episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a, a, a whole row of misunderstandings there. But by the end of it, Cronish goes off to be with the, the love of his life on their boat. Uh, which is called, because he's a priest, it's called The Second Coming. Ha ha, get it? Hey, uh, <laughs> I love like catching that in the background. I'm like, is their boat called The Second Coming? Cause that's yeah, amazing. but you laughed at that. <laughs> uh, I, uh, they get to the future because they think like, oh, well, this t- obviously this time it worked. It had to have worked this time. We have to leave Wolf in the past, but that's fine. Uh, and we get back to the present, and there's a big, giant, fuck- fucking black building... Yeah, uh, I forgot. It's not the Terradome. I forgot what they call the Kill Scraper, or something the like kill that. Kill Scraper. <laughs> it's something like that. Like it's it's the Terror Scraper or something. Just all like the you mm-hmm. know horror building. But yeah, it's it's there like ten years earlier than it ought to be. Yeah, it's like they, if yeah. Sauron got into modern architecture. <laughs> like, oh yeah, it definitely it looks... has like a an Eye of Sauron vibe going at the top there. <laughs> And it just looks crazy evil, which is weird because Keith David turns out to be like, oh, you you turned evil, didn't you? Like, by the like, end of it. And it's like, well, not really. I just wanted to cure disease. No, and he, he, yeah. he, he put he put so many put so much effort into make sure no one knew about this mm-hmm. stuff but him. And he, his old tragic backstory of why he did it. Yeah, so he, <laughs> he tried to preserve the timeline and cure disease by himself. Like, at the same time, he tried to have both. And he ended up having the biotics, too. And I'm like, oh, man, that's sad. But then I'm like, wait, so who decided, who was your architect who decided to build the evil building? Right? Like, like how did this still end up getting fucking built? Like, uh, yeah, and I, I, I like, uh, Josh basically trying to, like, looking at him at one point and going, no, man, I'm sorry. Like, we've done this a bunch of times already. <laughs> I just have to shoot you. I am sorry. I have tried a bunch of different ways to get, and, uh, but I did that. No, no, we did that last time. No. <laughs> and he nope. really uh, did try. Yeah, like you, but it is, I was not ready for Cronish. I don't know why he's great through the whole thing. He's at no point really is he a villain. Uh, and I still wasn't ready for how selfless. Um, and he just does it. Yeah. Like when, when he, he tells his theatrical, well, you know, how he was going to debut his, his cure all, mm-hmm. uh, which yeah. is, it has some issues as a, as a publicity stunt, but, um, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it's probably best he didn't really do it, but yeah. instead he was just going to give himself all of the world's diseases basically at once and then cure himself, uh, which no one would believe by just watching you. You injected water into one and you right. know, nobody would yeah, believe. failing. Uh, Good job. Wouldn't survive long enough to do all the tests to prove it. And yeah, I was sitting there going, dude, don't do that plan. That's a bad plan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but he just gives himself the disease and then throws the cure away and and dies. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah. I I just sat there going, oh wow, I Dang. did not. I mean, I just really did not think that that's how this was going. Uh, I also liked uh, uh, Owl. Was it Owl? Yes. Uh, with the with the merms. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Just get fucking mermed. Uh, yeah, mind worms, merms. <laughs> 
Yeah, because they uh they ended up having to Josh beat the game again because because they found uh his alter ego Jush. And he's like, wait, if I'm here in this reality, that means there's you two in, in, in the other reality, too. Yeah, they're not moving back and forth. We are in a parallel timeline. That means, yeah, and I, that moment of realization, like that light bulb was like the time travel nerd. I jumped up off the couch like, <laughs> time travel nerds unite. Like, yes, <laughs> game that fucking system. And this is what this is why I like that their references go past just name checking 80s shit and into like, like fully grokking the, the genre and the the tropes that they're playing with so that even the characters, if the characters are going to make this many references, it's, it's like having somebody that knows about zombie movies end up in a zombie movie. Mm -hmm. Better go past just them name dropping some zombie movies. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to see them look around and formulate a a sensible plan because they've seen these zombie movies. Right. And, Mm -hmm. and similarly, like when he stands back and goes, guys, you, you don't get this. Like, (laughs) so, yeah, so he makes his name in the game instead of Future Man, which was a play on Futterman. Um, he makes it don't take the bridge. Yeah. Because the bridge is what gets most of their team killed or, or, t- or take the bridge, don't, I, whichever one did the opposite of the, the way the mission went wrong. Yeah. And, and it's, I, I enjoy that like they don't get a second, there's a risk of them getting a second wolf and tiger. Yeah. Uh, but that would have been fine what, too, I think. Yeah, but that's that's really what they thought was going to happen. Um, but instead, they get most of the team, and Wolf and Tiger didn't make it. Uh, yeah. Well, and, actually, it was it, they get the two other people, Dingo and, and Owl. And yes. And it turns out that they had taken the other bridge. It almost goes worse for them because, yes. like, th- those were the only two that made it, and they end up with like this sensor mine on the on their back that they that's that shows right, up. That's right. Uh, that they have to pull off of there like immediately. Yeah, and uh, of course, then they have to go about re-explaining all of the uh the past again. I I, I like Josh looking over at Wolf and going, "Do you see? Do you see what mm-hmm. I had to deal with, you guys?" Yeah. Uh, but they, of course, they get off great lines like, "No, Dingo, Dingo, don't take that baby. Don't take the baby, Dingo." Uh, uh, yeah, I like uh him making all the food. Uh, for them, for when they, because they think they're gonna have like a whole army come mm-hmm. back, and, and so Wolf preps all of these hors d'oeuvres, and like, all right, they're not gonna have their I'm used to civilization, it's gonna be really disoriented. I'm just gonna make finger foods. Do you think that's gonna go? It's like, it's that good. Uh, and then him chewing them all out of like, uh, <laughs> when they're like, I haven't bathed in ten years. Then why did you eat the hummus with your hands? There, <laughs> there was a serving spoon right there. Ugh. Do you think I, ma- you think I made enough? And then t- I love Tiger was like. Honestly, no, but I, I didn't want to say anything. Yeah. Man, fuck you. <laughs> just trolling him. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that Tiger gets a whole resolution, realization that like, oh, I was screwed no matter what path I picked. And she's so happy. Man, that God, makes me feel a lot off. better. Yeah, Whoa. Okay. That's great. That's great. So this wasn't on me. Yeah. Uh, her weird living through the 40s uh, or 50s or whatever mm-hmm. and her coming back with all the slang uh, <laughs> while at the same time like, Oh, uh, Wolf's entire, like, how easily he learns massive life lessons somehow just fits with his character. And he pulls it off. Like, I don't hate him for it. And I, like, genuinely believe it. Like, oh, like, Wolf just nonchalantly fell backwards into self realization. Uh, cause his, you know, his started, like, in his over, uh, narration of uh, there, there is no downside to cocaine addiction. Mm-hmm. Yep, no. <laughs> It's a heavy cocaine, and and then at the end of it, like after he goes through his whole like like Josh, I shit your bat again. Uh, <laughs> he uh he looks at him and goes, you know, there is a downside to cocaine addiction. You lose most of the day, <laughs> or it takes about a day to get over. So you lose the day. And it's the and big life. Jump. That's it. Like. That's his entire takeaway of like, yeah, there is a downside to that. He inconvenienced. Yes, he was severely inconvenienced. Uh, <laughs> not even the like, I shat your bed multiple times. Like, nah, I don't know. I can give or take that. <laughs> but I wasted the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it, it was pretty good. Uh, the final assault is pretty fun as well. Um, they managed to conv- like, they managed, to, you know, Josh finally make- finds a workaround so they don't have to kill themselves in order to pull it off. Uh, I, 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 I like that, uh, there's a couple of plot threads that like are brought up that are immediately like, don't really connect anywhere. Like Josh being really good with explosives all of a sudden, hmm. he says like, who knew I'd be so good with explosives plot drop and like, 
oh, okay, I'm waiting for that to pay off. And well, then, also, like, the whole entire thing with his uncle, too. Well, his well, his uncle <laughs> is just one of those jokes that, like, just never gets resolved again, right. like Blapple, where it's just like, like oh, yeah. he owned part of Google, and that, I think it was just part of Josh's origin story for evil Jush, you know? Mm. Yeah, basically, yeah. They, they needed to give... Uh, they needed to give a way for him to be rich in the future. Yeah, because that's the, the whole AOL thing. If I'm, I'm pretty sure that young that the young uncle, uh, which he's uh he's Champ from Anchorman, uh, I can't remember the actor's name, David. Uh, well, we just saw name. him in fucking Stand Against Evil too. <laughs> uh, he's uh he was in uh, Cheap Thrills. He's been in, I mean he's in a ton of shit. Um. I will always remember him as Champ from Anger Man. Uh, whammy, whammy. But, uh, but the guy that plays the young version of him, I'm pretty sure is Axel from the middle, uh, the the kind of bland sitcom. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, which Sue Heck uh, was on the Middleman, his the the girl that plays his sister. But I'm pretty sure that that's that that's Axel that plays the the young stupid like, hey, I have that jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I appeared Terminator style in your room and stole your clothes. Uh, but yeah, him telling him you need to go upstairs and fill out that AOL application and get the fuck out before 4.0. <laughs> they like, but they're only going to pay in options. What good's that going to shut up? <laughs> fill out that application. Take the options. Uh, and yeah, then when he pops back in the future, he's rich. And I think that's, that's basically the entire reason that the uncle exists. And it, the uncle feels a little shoehorned in. Mm-hmm. Uh, in every scene, like I honestly, he looks too different from Ed Begley Jr. to me, and so I kept, I had a, a couple of moments where I thought he was just another friend at the dinner, and mm-hmm. then it clicked. Oh, you're the brother. Yeah, but they I th- don't. I honestly thought it was the me. woman's divorced husband that she just brought with them. Same, same. I thought like, oh, y'all are on the outs, but you're not divorced yet. Yes. But then, yeah, then I realized like, oh no, you're bitter because you thought you were being like set up, hooked up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they didn't click. That's it's, it's one of the only. I like that. I mean, I like that actor, and I thought he did good with the role. But it was one of the weird, like one of the only misfires on casting because he just doesn't look related to Ed Begley to me, uh, or Josh. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 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 weird running gag with uh, it was a uh, it was the two Latin youths and or you know two two hoodlums <laughs> and that Latino boy. Yeah, and and they don't leave it a lot. I. It's. I like that Josh catches it every time. I'm like, what is it with again with this man? What is with the Latin? What is with this? Uh, and he kind of keeps calling it out. It's like that's weird, man. What the racist. fuck? What is this? Yeah, a little, little racist. racist. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I do. I, I uh, there's uh, so there's uh, those running plot threads. Um, there's the one moment at the end where uh, they get the poison in the. Uh, <clears throat> in the in the hallway and wolf's gone down and it seems like tiger is unaffected by the poison <laughs> so i'm thinking season two is tiger a biotic uh, i think that's what they were leading to or something that's kind of i, I had to rewatch that scene because i had that same moment of like yeah um i think tiger's a biotic that'd be really uh, weird well but i'm not sure how I mean, they could do that i mean it's got to be something they they drew attention to it yeah. to the, where she is obviously not affected and yeah. Yeah, so jo- she realizes it. Like she stands there for a second and like, oh, what? Yeah, it's like yeah. what the fuck. And she, it looks like she gets an idea, and then they time jump away. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm not sure. Like she gets like this moment of realization, like on her face. It's a pretty good acting moment because I'm like, okay, she's off. They're not just running away. It looks like she's she knows so, like something to do. Like she just, just put something together for her. Yeah, maybe but, something but to do with the forties. Go with that. I can hope to God she gets a. They get a second season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really want to see where that goes. Uh, Josh pretty much finishes it, it all. Finishes it out like his game. He, uh, you know, nearly runs, escapes. He goes down the chute, runs out, barely escapes. He's like, "Yes, I did it!" And then the cop arrests him. Like, well, I'll take that as a confession. <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> uh, and we see him in jail later, like kind of being friends with the cop. Which is interesting. Like, they're playing chess together. Mm. And it's like, I don't think the piece moves like that way. No, that one's the little horsey, right? <laughs> no, that's the pawn. It's like, oh, man, God, this guy's an idiot. Like, he's not... He, he, yeah. It, yeah, but that they've that they've come to some kind of, of shared well, respect or bond over basically, the, being the only... Yeah, they're the only ones that can talk about it because they're the only ones that believe it happened. Yeah. 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 
The cop yeah, you has... know your friends aren't coming back for you. Yeah, that's part of the deal. Whatever, I know I'm right. Mm-hmm. And it's like I was kind of impressed by that, that that he just sticks with it. It was a weird take though. Like I didn't expect him to be friendly. Mm-hmm. Uh, not even not friends, but at least I mean they seem like friends. Mm-hmm. Like catching up on their lives and shit. Yeah, well, what's the cop got besides you know, pregnating Santiago's wife? So she's ugh. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Uh, her belly will be swollen with meatloaf. Sasha, are you hitting that? <laughs> uh, what can I say? Time heals all wounds. <coughs> oh, so weird. <laughs> There's only one more thing I wanted to mention before we wrap this one up is the the saddest death on the sh- on the show, I believe. Also the funniest one, and that is the death of Sigourney. Oh, so, yes. so that's that's got to be my favorite death of the entire show, where Wolf is just having to like. Kill her, Hal, th- uh, Hal nine thousand style assisted suicide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really kept waiting for Daisy, Daisy to. I know. To... I would be too. I was, th- I was waiting for the Daisy like a uh, uh, bicycle bill for two line. I was so waiting for it, but instead, it's the Navi I Wolf. I see you. <laughs> that I, yeah, that was perfect. I lost it when with with I see you, uh, and and again, weirdly good acting moment like. <laughs> Wolf's bond with the house is fucked up and genuine. <laughs> Which is weird because, you know, you know that the whole joke for going to James Cameron's house and spending the whole episode in that one house is so they don't have to show what the future 2032 looks like. Yes. It's a whole, yeah. it's a fucking cheat. And yet they take the yeah. joke so far that, like, that you just go with it. Yeah. Um, it, and, oh God, the whole plot that, like, the house is desperate to figure out how the fuck they are inside without having entered yeah it's like a lot it's like a locked room mystery for sigourney <laughs> and and it it's driving her insane like like cameron cannot come home without her understanding how they appeared inside mm-hmm. uh and i think they also lie and say that uh josh is uh tom arnold's son yeah who's like 11 or 12 <laughs> um yeah i i I was absolutely unprepared with how good the the whole James Cameron thing was going to be, uh, and 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 yeah, that that episode is an entire cheat, and it didn't dawn on me what they were doing until a couple episodes later of like, oh yeah, <laughs> keep asking me, keep bastards, <laughs> uh, and Rose is good at that. Like, there's uh, one of the great, one of the best moments in season one of Preacher was a hotel fight scene with uh, yes. with one of the ang- and the angels respawn when you kill them in like a flash of light. Well, they they turn and pull out of the hotel room through a, a pervy motel peephole through the wall, yeah, and or a bullet hole or something. And they so you're watching it through like a hole. So all you can see is like an occasional body fly across the the kind of aperture of the hole and a flash of light and blood and a flash of light and blood. It's just... And it's it's hysterical. It is so much better than. Had they shown the fight scene, I, inevitably the fight choreography at some point would have gone, eh, yeah, that's good. That's all right. It's a TV show. By by moving it outside, I, I, I sat there going, oh, okay, this is fucking great. And I felt like that on on a couple of moments of Future Man of like, oh, wow, you spent your money where you should and you didn't where you didn't need to. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we don't need to see Wolf uh, mess up a bunch of people in the lab uh, when after he's on meth. We can just <laughs> see him bash through one of the w- w- one of the doors with a body in his hand and go like, "Yeah, we pretty much know exactly what happened with him." Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you know what's <laughs> behind him. <laughs> uh but yeah, uh, uh again, I really greatly enjoyed the show. I'd highly recommend it. Um with that, I think we can wrap this one up here. We <laughs> We've, we've waxed po- poetically uh, uh, quite a bit about it, so l- thank you so much, Les, for joining us, for taking time out of your, your busy you know schedule, although I think you can just time travel back out of it, so I'm not sure how much time got taken out of it. Uh, well, uh, I'll, I'll do the math later. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, what was it? I looked it up a second ago. Haya Love, <laughs> which is the Navi for Until Next Time. <laughs> That's that's very good. Th- thank you so much. I see you, Les. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, no problem. And with that, we are on a pause to geek out. And... Wait, don't open that! No. I rolled the future! We have enough camera on you to record this. <laughs> yeah. Les! Les, are you there, buddy? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, thank God. 
I, I lost you a little bit in the a little bit for the '80s, but I, I think we finally found you. All right, just make sure all my bits are still here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully we don't have to switch yeah. parts. No, no, no cock piracy. Hello. <laughs>